As my partner, if you ever wear a green wool sweater with a white collar, I will not be going to dinner with you. What if I take you to Olive Garden? Then I might. I might consider, but you have to wear a hoodie over it. Okay, deal. Okay, this is going to be interesting. Are you ready to get down to reality? Let's get down to reality. <laughs> Let's do it. Welcome to Down to Reality. I am one of your hosts. My name is Bro, also known as Reality Ops on social media. And I'm Husband, also <laughs> known as Husband in the home. <laughs> what are we going to call you on here? Not Hubs. You hubs? Hubs. Okay. M is unfortunately out for the week, but we wanted to record an episode for you guys. So <laughs> we decided to have my husband do it. We are going to do our best to have a good episode, but I want to let you know, please... If this is the only one you hear, just try another one before you decide to possibly not come back because we don't know how it's going to go. We're just being hopeful. We do love talking Vanderpump together, though. Are you setting me up for failure already? No, I'm not setting you up for failure. I have a lot of It's going to be good. It's going to be good. Um, my husband really actually loves performing. He is known to give a speech or two at weddings. He is um, a perpetual, what's it called? Best man. Yes, I have been a five-time best man. Oh, God. He's been a five-time best man. So um, he's actually the speaker of the house. Oh, that sounds... <laughs> speaker of the house? I am not political at all. What? Speaker of the house, I Nancy know. Pelosi? I, okay. I'm saying you are the one who gives <laughs> speeches. But anyway, we are here to do our recap of Vanderpump Rules, episode 10. Usually when we do our episodes, we do our Valley recap first, then we do our Vanderpump recap. We're going to do our Valley recap as a separate episode that comes later in the week. And this way we can combine both episodes from that crazy dinner party. You'll notice that wherever you're listening, you should see chapters there so that you can skip along to whatever section you want to listen to if you're listening over several days, especially. Just a reminder, I'm also going to give you the news at the end. Like I normally do, I will add that on my own. There's been a lot. So this recording starts on a Wednesday and it's going to come out the following Tuesday for you, but we're going to record several times because we normally have to record several times anyway to catch you up with news, but I will make sure I record Monday night so that you have the most up-to-date Vanderpump news. Within the recap, there is some news that we're going to just throw in there. And when I say we, I mean me, but I'll also put some tea spliced throughout some talk about the reunion and then at the end i will give you some more information that i found out that is interesting we'll talk about some rumors going around and what i think about it and i'll catch you up on all the la la stuff because there's been a lot of la la there's also some rachel information that came up on her podcast this week that was just a lot uh regarding a post from joe and her and yeah so, are you ready to get into our hour recap? Yes, let's go. Okay. And so you guys know, we are going to actually be recapping the extended, uncensored version from Peacock, which is so much better. If you are able to get Peacock, I'm telling you, I thought it was worth it. They have not had all the episodes. You said you checked with this one only. This is the only extended and uncensored one, yeah. So, but I'm hoping they have the rest now that they've gotten such good feedback about this one. I feel like, why not? I'll let you know if they don't. But I really do recommend watching them because they are so much better. And there is so, many, so much added footage that we will go over throughout the episode. Yeah, I think it was like eight or ten minutes longer. Something like that. Yeah, that's yeah. a lot. That's a yeah. lot in show showtime. You ready to get into it? I'm ready. Let's go. Okay. So first of all, we start the episode with Katie working out with the girls. And I say Katie because you loved Katie in this scene, right? Yeah, she's hilarious. Tell us about, okay, can you tell them why you like Katie so much? Because I've tried to explain this to people. People are like, Katie's miserable. She's insufferable. We, you did not feel that. And you, oh, let's explain to them. You watched it for the first time. Yeah, I was, I was going to say, you've been trying to get me to watch Vanderpump Rules for years. and 10 years. Yeah. And I, I refused to watch it for whatever reason, but we watched every other reality show together. You're, you, you love which one? I think what's we your, probably just had a principle. What's your Monday night fave? Oh, The Bachelor, of course. Yeah, not football, but The Bachelor. Oh, yeah. 
<laughs> Monday night football. Yeah. No, he loves football. He, um, Sunday's football day, and it's called the um, the most miserable day of the week because you're well, miserable as a, as a Jets, you're Jets fan. A yeah. Jets, yeah. But what did you? Sorry. So, so you've been trying to get me to watch Random Rules forever, and I refused for whatever reason. And I remember I was out driving right when Sand Scandival hit, and you texted me and. Oh my God, I can't believe what Tom did. You know, this news is breaking. And I'm thinking, who the who the heck is Tom Sandoval? Like, I don't know these people. And the whirlwind just started then, and you were getting so into it, and all the stuff was coming out, and you started the TikToks, and then I started to get a little obsessed with it. And then we started watching Vanderpump from season one. And what did you say to me within the first 20 minutes of episode one? Why have you been keeping this from me? And then I realized you weren't keeping it from me. You were trying to get me to watch it. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I tried for 10 years and then you were like, how have you been keeping this for me? And it's the most amazing TV I've ever watched. What's the moral of the story here? Watch Vanderpump. What else? AKA listen to your wife. (laughs) I have really good TV suggestions. Anyway, that's our, that's our little story. Katie, let's talk about Katie because you do have some feelings on Katie and and you love Schwartz. Let's talk about them really quick before we get into this Katie thing. Cause I think the, Audience, in case you have to fill in at other times, in case you're our um, substitute, <laughs> substitute? <laughs> substitute teacher, substitute podcaster, how do you feel about Katie and Schwartz? I, I love Katie. I've loved her since, since day one on the show. Schwartz I love. And I've, I've always been kind of rooting for them since day one, almost like a Jim and Pam, Russ and Rachel type thing. Is that how you feel? A, a little bit. I mean, even now when they're you know divorced, it's watching you still kind of have in the back of your mind like, Oh, I, I'm kind of still rooting for them. It's like, well, you know, it's not going to happen, but you're kind of still rooting for them. At least that's how I feel. How um, do you feel about the way Schwartz has treated Katie, though? Because you uh, always have a lot to say when we're watching. Yeah, it, I as feel much like. as I love Schwartz, I mean, he's been horrible to her over the years. I'm, I'm, you know, there were good moments too, I'm sure, but just some of the comments he said to her and things he's done on the show and just disregarded her feelings and putting her first uh, is not what I would be doing. As someone who's in a loving relationship. <laughs> what are you doing that for? I don't know. Why did you say it? Was like that, that too extra? What the heck was that? Is this how you talk to other people about me? Maybe. Wait, hold on. Katie. Yes. So we're watching those scenes from the past. And they're showing Katie at like a dinner table having to apologize for shit. That she has no reason to apologize. Remember when she got on the plane with Schwartz? And Schwartz took the first class. Took the first class seat. I can't even imagine doing that to you. And he's just sitting there in the first class. He's like, oh, hey. Sorry, I didn't tell you I was taking the upgrade. And you're walking by me heading back to economy. He's so bad. Uh, Really, really bad. I don't know if it's Schwartz is just like clueless sometimes or if he's, I don't know. Like, is he really making those decisions in the moment to be that way towards her? Or is he just not even processing what he's doing. Do you know what I really think, honestly? I honestly think that, I know maybe this is a bad way because actually you learned a lot through, like you always say your grandfather was a good influence for you. Yeah. Um, But so what I really think is Schwartz hasn't had a good influence or somebody to look to for how to treat a wife or a partner and he just doesn't know what to do. And he needs to grow up. And I do feel like he's growing up a little bit. I mean, he's becoming a, a plant daddy. Yeah, I I don't know what's up with that, with the plants. I I mean, I have a slight thought that his whole idea of what? bringing plants to everyone this season is his way of like trying to put a little bit of himself in everybody's home. Like, hey, I'm Schwartz. I'm still here. Don't hate me. Is that what you think? Yeah, I kind of thought that before. Like he's always bringing in a plant. As a like, oh, here's a reminder in your home of like, oh, Schwartz brought us this plant. Oh, he's not Sandoval. That's like, interesting. He's a different person. I, I feel like that's just my my theory on it. He's, no, that's a good theory. He's definitely trying to separate himself from Sandoval, clearly, right? Yeah. I mean, this whole season, he's done a, a really good job. I, I As much as I could be proud of Schwartz, he's been, I, I am proud of the way he is trying to distance himself from Sandoval and almost almost become like his own person because you haven't seen that in past seasons and any opportunity that comes up and he's presented with a situation where he can say, I disagree or Tom, you effed up or I'm going to remove myself from the situation. He is doing that and he's making those efforts to be that person that is himself. Yeah, 
Kathy Gray. So, okay. The first scene we have that's like a meteor scene is, oh, well, you said Katie working out doesn't want to work out. Yeah. I mean, Katie working out was, was just, you could just tell she's like, you know, what she's got the bands between her legs. She's lifting the, <laughs> the weights up and you, she just doesn't want to be I, there. I love how Katie doesn't want to do anything that's like good for her. And that's just like why I love her. But then we have Anne and she goes to interview with Ariana and she shows up to the house wearing a full-blown freaking suit. Sanibel, obviously, when she goes upstairs to, 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 I don't know if you want to say check on him or just connect with him or be like, hey, I'm here, um, obviously knows that she's what yeah, she's doing. Yeah, I mean, doing. was she supposed to work that day and, and she's just showing up in a suit or like, I mean, Tom, you could tell by his face, he kind of thought something was up. And- right. He wasn't even looking at her. He was like looking down when she came in. Yeah. Yeah. So Anne clearly wants to work for Ariana and- I've listened to her podcast. She, her podcast, like I said before, is great. We sign an NDA. And she just says she wants to work for a boss bitch. You know, she says she's a queer woman. She wants to work for another queer woman. She just feels like she would connect with her so much more. They're into the same thing. She loves sketch comedy. Ariana takes sketch comedy very seriously. So she wants to work for her, guys. That's what it is. I feel like it's kind of like a divorce for her where she has to choose between mom and dad. And she's choosing mom. And then you have to realize she basically worked for the both of them. Like, I know she's Sandoval's assistant, but she was there with Ariana all the time. Like, it's like, it, and Ariana was Sandoval's keeper of sanity. Sandoval is really difficult right now. So even though Anne has worked for him in the past, it's clear that right now she's like, I don't want to do this shit anymore. I don't want to live this life anymore with Sandoval. And she wants to go to Ariana. And then we do get a clue, and I'll tell them this now, about if you follow me, I've said before, I think Anne is not Ariana's assistant, but I think she's going to be working for the sandwich shop. Well, it's not even a clue. They said it flat out. Katie said to Sandoval later on the beach scene in the extended clip that she wants Anne to work for her to help them at the sandwich shop. So I think Anne's waiting for that sandwich shop to open while she's doing her podcasts, and I'm sure she's doing acting jobs as well. Something that like really stood out to me. I love how giddy she was when she first came in. She, you know, was wearing a suit. Nice to meet you, Ariana. <laughs> she had her little purple folder with her resume in it. It was just, it was, it was just so perfect. Yeah, she was really ex- excited for this to go down. Oh, then there was an extended scene within this scene, and that was really cute because it was Anne, and we. Love Anne. We are big fan Anne fans in this house. Huge Anne fans. Um, and what did she say in the extended scene again? She was like about the underwear. Yeah, so she jumped in. She said, It's not always picking up his underwear. Sometimes it's cool stuff. Like when I get to go get the car washed. I get to go to the drive thru and order French fries. <laughs> and like she's just saying all this, or just like her, you know, just her like smirk and like happiness and giddiness. And it was just like it hit home for me. Yeah. Wait, you said hit home and we talked about how you get these things wrong. What do you mean that hit home for you with Anne? We talked in the last podcast about your idioms. Like it, or, or your metaphors it, it or your did saying. it for me. Like it, it hit. It felt, it felt good. That's different. That's not a hit home. Do you know what hit home means? I don't know. <laughs> it hit for me. It, it, it hit home. I don't know. Hit home. Means, I really liked it. Hit home means to hit you in like a deep place that's like personal for you. Uh, I didn't know it was a, a deep place. Yeah. Okay, so it hit for you. It hit for me. Okay. I mean, that is cool. I do love when you can go to the drive-thru and get french fries. Like when you have to do a test, but you're like, oh, I can do this now. I can go get some crunchy french fries. So it seems pretty freaking obvious what she's doing, but she goes upstairs to talk to him, like kind of like check on him, say hi before she begins. And he's looking down already. Like he knows what's going on already, right? Isn't that like super clear? Yeah, I'm sure he knows something. Part of me wasn't sure if that is how he treats her sometimes in general, maybe a little dismissive. I wasn't sure. But then by the end of that scene, you know, he kind of made a face after he's a little down. You can kind of tell he knows that she's there for some other reason. He sees her in a suit. Then he, speaking of, so then he comes out of the room when she goes back down and is talking to Ariana and he sneaks out of the room like a kid going to look for Santa Claus at night. Like he's listening for what's going on down there. and. Ariana's having this interview with Anne, and Anne says flat out, like, she wants to work for her. I know she's obligated to Sanibel, but I really think that for her to have to switch like that, I'm sure she had plenty reason to do it, but 
that doesn't mean, even though it's hard to feel bad for Sandoval, this is one of those moments where I think we did both feel like a little bad. Yeah, I definitely felt it for Sandoval when he was, you know, sort of tiptoeing out into the hallway and, and overhearing the conversation. And I mean, it's never, it's probably never a great feeling to hear someone that you work with or someone that works for you that is trying to leave to go to someone else, especially in this scenario, Ariana, you know, for Tom, um, it, it sort of, it sort of hits different. Like you're almost being, well, I guess betrayals. It is a betrayal, but I mean, yeah. Tom's done a number of betrayals in his days himself. Yeah. And I said this in the last podcast that like everybody kind of <laughs> leaves him, but I think, you know, she has every right to leave. She's uncomfortable. It looks like to me in this situation, doesn't want to work for him, but I know I feel bad too. I'm just like, it does suck. That would suck to have your assistant go interview. And I love her. I love Anne, but I totally, I feel the same as you with that, where I was just like, but I'm like mad at him after seeing the extended scene. So when I'm watching, I'm still like, whatever, I don't care. It's this weird roller coaster of like you feel bad in certain scenes, but then you realize, well, no, you shouldn't feel bad at all. Right. Okay. But Sandoval, we find out from podcasts and all that after shows, Anne was really upset because then he apparently yelled at her, I think, or made her feel real shitty. She was sobbing and she went in the extended scene here. They had her doing a confessional and did a confessional. She was saying she went to Ariana and she knocked on her door and she was like, I think I'm, I don't have a job anymore. And Ariana was like, it's going to be OK. It'll be OK. And then she said she just went downstairs and sobbed. But the weird thing is this whole talk about, is she fired? Is she not fired? I mean, Anne says she was fired. Sandoval basically says she was fired. But then in an extended scene was saying that he has a new assistant, but then was like on the beach saying, well, uh, I didn't fire her. Well, you did if you have a new assistant, which by the way, guys, I saw his assistant. I thought it was his friend. I've seen him all summer. He was all over his page. I saw him doing things with Amazon boxes. That sounds terrible. That's not what I meant. When I saw him with those boxes, I thought maybe Sandoval was moving. This was over the summer. Turns out, no, I guess he was just opening his mail because he's his assistant now. He is a singer. And when I say singer, I mean like a real good singer, good looking guy, like model. He looks like, uh, what does he look like? He's not Adam Levine, but he looks like a very artsy looking. I don't remember what he looks like, but I was actually he, surprised that Tom would hire a, a better singer than himself. Yeah, I that, agree. that really surprised me. But yeah, <laughs> very, very good singer. Yeah, he looks like um, somebody Tom Sandoval would have a crush on, actually. So anyway, I can see that. Yeah. So he is his new assistant. He has that new assistant. He's acting like Ann wasn't fired. But I mean, you fired Ann. I mean, he's doing that for the camera, though. Like if he's right, making himself behind the scenes, if he's yelling at her, making her cry, and then all of a sudden the camera comes back out. True. And it's like, oh, well, I don't know. I'm still talking to Ann. I'm I'm figuring stuff out. He's doing it for the camera to look better, but he's also doing it to say, oh, I'm not I'm not saying Ariana and Katie can go hire Ann now because she's still kind of my assistant. We're working stuff out. Oh, you're so So it's a little bit of like, you know, this is this is my person. Almost like like, you can't have a little bit. Like you can't have her yet. I don't know yet. We're still working stuff out. And he says he has his HR, HR department. Dep- what, 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 age, what what is his HR, HR department? department consists of? I would love to know. He doesn't even know what HR is. He has no fucking clue. That one definitely made me laugh. Oh, my God. What a joke. Okay. So, anyway, that's the whole Anne firing poor thing. I just love her. Yeah, big fan of Anne. Oh, we really – we want her on TV shows, right? We said Curb – she was on The Office, guys. She was on The Office, yes. Yeah, I see this on the last podcast. We found out she was on The Freaking Office, uh, like a small role on an episode of The Office. It's the best job ever. She was in the uh, yeah the, the customer service when Michael got a second job. Is that what it was? Yeah. That's so funny. So then we have our favorite plant daddy, Schwartzy. Plant daddy, Schwartz. Come in uh, Brock and Sheena's house with Summer Moon, who is so freaking cute. She is beyond adorable. Adorable. And Schwartz tells everybody that he's very sad because he opened his Instagram and saw a bunch of people holding their bellies. All and pregnant moms holding their bellies and his, his clock is ticking. He's getting his, his biological clock is ticking. 
So this is what I mean. Like he obviously wants to grow up, just doesn't. And I think he's learning how. It's a shame he couldn't have learned that while he was with Katie. Took him like losing Sandoval for a bit. I feel like to realize and losing everything to realize, oh shit, I'm 40. Was he 42? He's a year older than Sandoval. I got to step the fuck up. So, by the way, my parents told me today, do you have to curse so much? I'm like, this is why I told you guys not to listen. Like, I don't curse a lot in real life. For some reason, it comes out on the podcast. Right? Would you say you curse that much in real life? No, I actually never curse during the day. Very rare. Yeah. (laughs) Well, because we have a kid. But even at night, I don't curse a lot. For some reason, the cursing comes out with the passion of fan approvals. Um, You only curse at all the listeners. (laughs) Yeah, I only curse at my listeners. And our listeners. So then they have this conversation and Schwartz is saying that he feels like now, basically, guys, he's, I know he's upset that Max slept with Katie, but I honestly feel like he's really fucking happy because he feels like now we're even. He really we're thinks we're playing even field, Yeah. Right? Yeah. So you're saying there's a chance. That's what I feel like. Dumb and dumber. Uh, like it's, you're saying there's a Which, chance we can get back on just even terms. And yes. That's what he tried to do at the – I mean, we're jumping ahead to that scene now where he's trying to shake her hand and say, let's just start fresh. We could talk about that now. Let's go to dinner. The, like, no, I'm not going to dinner. <laughs> yeah, she's like, you want to go to dinner? She's like, no, I don't want to go to dinner. What? What is wrong with you? That scene – all right, well, you want to talk about that? We'll jump. There, well, do you want to comment on the Max thing really quick? I mean, I have a, I have a thought about that myself. Okay. Um, as – me personally, I don't think what Schwartz did with Raquel, breaking that rule there is anywhere the same as Max and Katie. I know Schwartz broke the rule first by by kissing Raquel. Oh, you think Katie but, is worse? Oh, uh, I think the Katie and Max thing is worse, but I'm still trying to decide who it's worse on. Is it worse for Max as Schwartz's best friend to to do that, or is it worse for Katie to go after max i i I think they're both katie didn't go after max that was an equal thing and by the way i have to stop you and say this i don't know if you know this sheena said in her podcast that came out today or yesterday i I saw your video oh you did see my video okay i wasn't sure because sometimes when you work and you don't get to those she said that she guys pushed them to kind of hook up that night (laughs) sheena fucking pushed them to hook up but then all the editing makes it seem like Sheena was surprised and tracking the location. The reason why she's looking at their locations is because she knew she like egged them yeah. on to to go hook up. I, I saw the video you posted and I was like, oh. Oh, we love that part. Oh. When she goes, oh, about, about the location. And then I looked again. I was like, oh. oh. We also find out that Lisa, there's an extended scene, a, a never before scene in this episode in the Peacock version where Lisa talks about how Max, oh, here's some information for you all. Somebody sent me that Max has an only fans now and if you saw my video for only 15 dollars a month which is just over double the price of denise richards only fans you too can be a friend of max boyens and see what the deal is and elisa says that he's well she doesn't say he's hung like a horse she she alludes to it which is kind of gross to say sorry this is weird for you she alludes to him being very, very well endowed. And then we find that out from his only fans. He's blessed. Max is very blessed. Oh, is that what she said? Yes. Oh, I thought you were saying he's blessed. And I was like, no, so why would I say he's blessed? <laughs> no, Lisa said that. We all, we've all heard that Max is very blessed. Is that what she said? Yeah. And then James's mom is there and she finds out about Max banging Katie. Uh, and she says to Lisa, but, she's like, she keep repeating that I'm, are you? Are you are you pro Katie for the banger? She's what like, are you pro Katie banging? Are you pro Katie banging Max? And Lisa was like, yeah. And she's like, me too. And she's no, she has Ali. She's like, are you? And she's like, yeah. She's like, me too. I'm pro Katie banging Max. Because here's the thing. So you feel that way. I don't feel that way. I feel like Schwartz disrespected her enough time. He even if you do it fucking once, he cheated on her throughout their entire relationship, throughout their marriage. She just found out about Sheena, and that was a revenge bang. And they talk about this on the after show. Also, that was a revenge bang. And you know what? All power to you. I think it's fucked up on Max's part, but I don't think it's fucked that fucked. I, I think it's a little fucked up on Katie's part, but it was kind of like, eh. Also, don't forget Schwartz said last year about Katie. Well, I don't care if you like or with one of my friends. And he's like, even Sandoval. What? What? Oh, yeah. 
He literally said that. So now she was with one of your friends. And again, I honestly, I think he's upset. He goes, Max, Max. But I don't think he's that upset because now you're saying there's a chance. Yeah. And him and Max are still friends, I'm assuming. Him and Max are still friends. Yeah, they are. They're still friends. Because Schwartz does let things slide. Like, he's just like, eh. He lets things roll off. Things that would probably really hurt him if he addressed in therapy, he'd actually be angry at and whatever. But, like, he doesn't go to therapy. He said this before. I wish he would just because it's so helpful. But he doesn't. He deals with it in other ways, like sobriety benders and things like that and being a plant daddy. But he even says he's like, by the way, I'm not mad at Max. I mean, of course you're a little mad at Max. It's weird. It's weird. Imagine that was to you. know that like your your best friend is you know with your so your ex wife that you were with for for twelve years, uh, not married for twelve, but you in, know what I mean. In a way, I think that it's a little easier knowing Max like sleeps with all of them. Like he slept with Chena. He slept with obviously now Katie. He slept with Kristen. He slept with Katie's other best friend Dana. So boy gets around town and so i just think that he was kind of like eh, a little bit more i don't know yeah i'm not saying katie didn't have what you know she had the right to to do that but that's interesting i didn't know that you felt that way i felt i was just like i think it's a little fucked up and i'm like you know what good for you yeah i think just in general it's just a little a little effed up and and i'm not sure probably more on max's side to be honest yeah than than katie right So now we have the water tasting that Lala set up at James and Allie Bally's house. But do you love that he calls her Allie Bally? So I used to call my best friend Allie Bally too. Yeah, I love it. And James tells Lisa in this extra scene that, well, I'll set up this party in my house. But she had me buy all the pizza. He said he spent $150 on pizza. Why are you having a party in James' house and then you're making James pay for the freaking pizza? You make bank. Lala makes bank on her podcast. She's got one of the top podcasts, okay? Tippity top of this category, TV and film reviews or TV and film, whatever it's called. The girl's making money. The girl has her own company. Why are you making James pay $150 for pizza when you're doing your party? I think what stood out to me more was that four pies from Pizza Hut cost $150. Because I don't, four pies? They brought in four pies. James brought in two, Sandoval brought in two, and there were, that's all at the table. It's one hundred fifty dollars. What kind of, what kind of price gouging is in California? Yeah, we're gonna have to find that out because New Jersey Pizza Hut is not that pricey. That is ludicrous. But I want to say first, we liked when Allie and James were in the kitchen and the water sommelier. I can't say that word. Sommelier. Yeah, I think I did. I can't it. say that word either. Som- sommelier. Sommelier. Som- sommelier. Mm, sommelier. Whatever. We're gonna pretend that's right. The water sommelier was there and. James and Allie were in the kitchen peeking, and he's like, oh, no, we think you saw us. I love when he was looking out the window, though, and he's like, Martin's out there, the water man. Is that what <laughs> the water man. He's like, and then he saw him look. He's like, I'm so embarrassed. <laughs> Schwartz shows up, and he looks like literal elf, Will Ferrell in Elf, one of our favorites. He, he shows up looking like elf. Why is he wearing that? It's, it's an interesting shirt. Um, it's the most unattractive, one of the most unattractive pieces of clothing I've ever seen. I'm not even exaggerated. I'm serious. It was, I don't understand. He has those stylists now. The Solomon sister is a very good stylist. Thank God, because he was dressing like that. He was dressing like that. So the <clears throat> water tasting is, first of all, it's funny because when I looked at their social medias over the summer, it felt like it was going to be like super cool. And I guess it was cool. But while they were there, they seemed pretty like, eh, it's water. Yeah, Do you no, taste no, different waters? Uh, I mean, no, not really. I, I could taste the difference between like an ice cold glass of water and like a normal tap water. But if I'm trying different bottled waters, like. Well, the water I can't stand. Actually, um, Kristen and Zach Wickham, who I really love from. Nestle from don't say the name which they were on the podcast and they were saying that a water that they really don't like starts with an a and ends with an a Ugh. yes don't like it starts with an a and ends with an ina oh oh gotcha and then there's another one that's like disgusting i hope you guys don't have a well, another one that i literally cannot even it's thick starts with an n and ends with a lee <laughs> <laughs> you know it's a, you said it 
you don't want to say the names in case they ever want to sponsor you. Yeah, exactly. That's literally exactly what I'm thinking. They're never going to do it. You know yeah. what? I don't want to want that sponsor because I don't like it. I love their chocolate. Good Give chocolate. Me, wait, is that the same company? It's got to be. Yeah. Give me your chips all, all day long. Crunch don't, bar? Don't you give me your bar? water. Give me your crunch bar. Do not give me your water. I don't ever want it. It's it's thick. I don't even understand how you can make thick water. It's the most – I. why do people buy it? People buy it. They willingly decide, I'm going to go to the store and I'm going to buy – That I'm asking. Is that it's, a, it's a bad choice. No, but how does this stay in business? It's on sale probably. The only times we've ever bought awards <laughs> on sale. Probably and then I was like, sale, I'm yeah. not drinking this anymore. Okay, Poland Spring, you could sponsor us. We like the Poland Spring. Do you like the Poland Spring? Like a Fiji? Fiji. Okay. Anyway. So I just, I, I love. Okay. Okay. So one part that said that I thought was funny when I think it was Lala said, has anyone ever done a water tasting before or something? And yeah. You no, know, Sandoval making his awkward joke. Oh, yeah, I did yesterday. I did one yesterday. Right, yeah, right. I did one yesterday. Just kidding. Like, but that's like a stupid joke that like I would do too. So like I almost like felt in that moment that it was just like a stupid awkward no, joke. No, but he has no comedic timing. I think that's the problem. Sometimes he has good comedic timing because it's so awkward right now. Sometimes you can't tell when he's actually being serious with his delivery or when he's like trying to be sarcastic. And Ariana could not roll her eyes any higher to heaven. Yeah, like she, she just cannot really stand him. By it. It would bother the shit out of me too if my ex was there who I hated and I had to deal with him at this event making annoying jokes. I would just be so annoyed at every single thing that person said. I love that Martin called himself the Harry Potter of water. I know you really liked that. What made I you just, like it so much? I don't know. Just the way he said it, it was it was just very funny and he's, he's got the Harry Potter glasses on. What do you think he meant by that? He had Harry Potter glasses on? I mean, he's got, you know, the kind oh, of the round the glasses. Oh, yeah, kind of? Yeah, yeah. And uh, I don't know, maybe he just considers, considers himself the Harry Potter of water, like uh, because he's a wizard of water, a wizard of water. And he's got all of these different concoctions. Oh, I should tell everyone, actually. So when I did follow him in the summer, I followed him on Instagram and TikTok. He has really interesting, informative videos about water. And you're like, holy shit, I had no idea water was this fucking complicated, but also like really helpful for your bodies. Like I learned a lot about the mineral water. And the pH of water, which a lot of people know about pH, but like the mineral water was interesting to me. Having sodium in water is actually helpful. There's a lot. So I do recommend him go looking him up. Yeah. I remember in the past you sent me a video and when he popped up in the episode, I'm like, wait, I know this guy. Yeah. I remembered, right, oh yeah, right, this, right. Is, this is the video, the exact video they showed. Right. And the episode was the one that you had sent me in the past. His name is Martin Reese. Okay. On Instagram. Let me see what he is on. Do you think he'd be a Gryffindor like Harry Potter? Oh, you and your friends love talking about which Harry Potter um, school you would belong to. Is that what you call school? Oh, yeah. Anytime someone new joins our team, we, At work. we try to figure out what house they would belong to in Harry Potter in Hogwarts. It's very serious to you. Very serious. We had a whole week where we actually made our own houses with crests and house ghosts and stories, backstories to the ghosts. Sounds really cool. <laughs> very cool. <laughs> <laughs> if you know, you know. Um, okay, so his his TikTok is the same, but it's Martin Reese. It's R I E S E, and I'm telling you, he's, he's very interesting. Okay, important to also point out, Dana was here, and Dana had talked about this on the podcast. She has a podcast, disrespectfully, with Katie. Very funny, love it. Dana has got a very dry sense of humor, but she was saying that she gets so much anxiety filming. She hated this, and this going to this water party was like a good indicator to her, like, nah, she never wants to do this again. She was very uncomfortable. I think she might have said she almost had a panic attack, but I'm not sure. And she looks totally fine on screen, but it just shows you how much is going on that we don't see behind the scenes. I love Dana. It's a shame she can't be on TV because I really, you haven't got to know her yet because you haven't gotten to her season yet. We're only in seven with you. It's, we're taking it slow. Yeah, we we just got to the line where Schwartz told Katie, okay, I can't stand your voice. Oh, worst sign of the whole. <laughs> not to jump back to that, but. Worst sign of the whole series. I'm not even kidding. That's that's bad. I can't stand the sound of your voice. <laughs> yeah, that was bad. Oh, the guy mentioned the the thousand dollar bottle. There's not many in the world, and this is the only one in the U.S. Yeah, is what really, about it? Is it really popping open that bottle on Vanderpump Rules and James's house? He is his Vanderpump Rules. Are you Jimmy number one show of all time? <laughs> the only one in the U.S. thousand dollar bottle. No, truly, how different can water taste though that would make it that much money? That's what I want to know. I don't know. I just, I just love Katie's reaction Did to he the whole say thing. It's water. It tastes like water. It tastes like water. Water. <laughs> 
he was saying this could have been dinosaur piss. That really confused me. Because speaking of dinosaur, I'm just saying we know we know a lot about dinosaurs, but I also teach kids about decomposition and all that. And well, it all, I mean, not to go completely off topic, but- Oh God, do you know a lot about this? Or well, something? I'm really into like Neil deGrasse Tyson and all the creation of the universe and that type of stuff. But like everything that's within our earth here is- is reused so like yes of course it is all the same sort of you know resources and molecules and right and 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 yeah everything sort of gets reused so is it actually dinosaur piss no but like that liquid would at some point possibly end up will leach into a water know, source is that what he's trying to say or okay. end up being sort of evaporate evaporated up into the sky and then it comes down as rain and then back into a water source. like yeah everything that's in this earth today is is what we're Reusing, and we just bought the natural sparkling water Perrier for the first time because Miss Lala Kent doesn't stop talking about it, and it is pretty good. It's really good. You would say it's really good. I Are- like it a lot. You, I, <laughs> I mean, well, now I'm going against what I'm saying what Katie was saying. It's just water, but obviously, you taste the difference when it's like sparkling water versus like just regular water. I don't. I guess they were drinking all sparkling water there, so maybe all non-flavored sparkling waters taste the same. We, we have like strawberry ones here. We have lemon, we lime. Have lime. So like yeah, those all like taste flavor different, flavor. obviously. We like flavor, 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 flavor. Um, okay, so enough about the fucking water. Let's get to the. Oh, then Sandoval is with the guys in the back hanging out, like Twenty One Jump Street in the back, like Fresh Prince of Bel Air. What does Brock say? Chilling Sandoval, out, what's going on with? Relaxing all cool. What? Brock goes like Sandoval, what's going on with tea or whatever? And Sandoval was just like, ah, you were just, you know, we're hanging out, we're chilling. So yeah, like he really was just hanging out with his girl. Like he wasn't in anything serious, it seems like. Now he is. Now he's with Victoria, who used to be with Leonardo DiCaprio, which is just mind boggling to me that she's with Sandoval now. But so he, they show a scene and it's a flashback of tea with Ariana, where Ariana's like, How old are you? And she's like, 25. That makes sense. And yes, it does. But Sandoval then relays this to Brock and says, you know, she was like asking T how old she was, and blah, blah, blah. He was, she was like kind of tacky, like talking about her getting involved in his dating life. And it's just so funny to me that he's calling it tacky when he cheated on her, had a seven-month affair mm, with a friend. And so then you're going to call her tacky? Fuck no, no. You don't get to say that. Yeah. You don't get to say that. Agree or disagree? Oh, completely agree. I mean, tacky is not even the right word, and I don't. Even think, <laughs> I know it's vocabulary. I don't even think he should should say have the right to say anything about that. <laughs> then Brock tries to give him advice, and he's like, you know, you should just talk to Ariana. And he's giving him what I think is actually sometimes Brock is a little shit stirrer, like Tamara, and other times he's very good. Like I like Brock a lot of the time, and then other times he drives me nuts. But he was giving him good advice, and he was being calm. And Sandoval's problem is he cannot freaking just shut the freak up and listen instead he's defensive he's like why do i gotta be the one to do it why do i gotta do this why do i gotta do that well like why don't you just like listen to me so annoying yeah it, it just always excuses deflecting what i will say about brock is i i love how direct brock has been with sandoval so far this season i mean we saw it in tahoe you know not backing down just telling him how it is telling him what he should be doing He's doing it here, but then we have certain scenes where Brock is rubbing me the wrong way, and he's kind of like going the opposite approach of like saying, "Well, oh, Ariana needs to get over this and and move on, and you know she shouldn't be choosing who we all hang out with, and right, you know she oh she shouldn't have that level level of anger, and like well you, yeah, you can't really be on both sides there. Yeah, we know that he has a history of that, so I thought it was strange for him. Again, I think Brock has had a lot of growth, but I feel like, what, you? You're going to talk about Ariana's anger? Are you joking, dude? Like, you have no fucking right to talk about her Well, Sheena even called him out there in that that scene. Do you love when Sheena calls him out? Because I do. Yeah, I do like it a lot. She's And then, 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 you know, he kind of, for the most part, he he sort of, you know, backs down a little bit and then kind of realizes and listens. Yeah, he does. He's pretty good. At, sometimes he'll get a little angry in the moment, but then... I think I, you talked about this before. I think sort of like the bluntness of like, you know, a lot of Australians are very sort of yeah. blunt in what they speak. And I, I think that's how Brock is. He kind of just sets what's on his mind. And I think sometimes when he hears other people's point of views or feedback from Sheena, you know, that 
can sometimes make him realize that there are other viewpoints Mm -hmm. or other ways of thinking of things. He has, I feel like they have good communication, even though they have their issues. I feel like they have good communication. And because like with us, we had to learn when we had harder times, like we had to learn how to communicate effectively for each other, but just like effectively as human beings and do a lot of work on ourselves individually and then work together to do that. And I feel like they do that. I feel like they both really take the time to work on themselves and then work together as a couple. But we're going to see them having issues in the next few episodes. We're going to see them having like some really, they're going to put more out there. Okay. Which will be interesting. And I hope, I do think they'll be okay. They just bought a house. Well, it's under Sheena's name. And like we said on another podcast, I'm happy that he, see, how do you feel about the whole shit that people make fun of him for being the breadwinner, like Nick Vile, you know, Vile. Yeah. I mean, Nick Vile's an idiot. Oh, you think he's an idiot? I mean, he says, he says stuff just to get the reactions. I mean, that's what he does in. I mean, I also like right. Nick. We like, like he's we entertaining. Like, him. like, yeah, we like like him and I don't like him, him on at the, the same time. Like, you know, I like when he came. You know, joined that season out of nowhere, pissed off all the guys. Like, uh, you know, I liked oh him on Special God, Forces. I forgot about that. What season was that? Caitlin? It, it was no, uh, no, he was. I don't remember. Caitlin. It was like after after the first season that he was on. It was like Hannah Brown, maybe, but then he didn't stay. Right? She didn't. He, I think she got rid of him, but yeah. he was around for I think a little bit. Yeah, no, I I think Nick is very smart. He likes to get reactions. He likes to piss people off, get reactions, get the money, gets the listens. Yeah. Um. So he is smart in that sense. Yeah. Uh, but but then also some of the stuff he says is kind of like, come on. He made the merch payroll husband on his site. He is getting the money for payroll husband. When I think Charlie was actually the one who said it. Charlie from Veteran Pump Rolls guys was the one who said it on Nick's podcast about Brock, and it's like. Do you, how do you feel about that? Like, I mean, that, that rubbed me the wrong way. I, I like that's very old school way of thinking. Payroll husband, like the men are out, you know, with the breadwinners. And that's obviously not the case today. You know, there's a lot of more equality and there's a lot of women that are out there being the breadwinners and to kind of call out Brock for being a payroll husband. It's, it's, it's not right. I mean, it's also sort of diminishing what she is doing, going out and, you know, being, the breadwinner and, 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 you know, le- leading the income of the family. And it's just, it's just a weird thing. It just really rubbed me the wrong way. The, um, and a lot of people say it. it's not just him. A lot of people say it and I don't understand it, but I feel like it shows something that he let her, and it sounds stupid to say let, but there are some people who wouldn't like she put that name in her house and it kind of shows he's not after her just for the money. He does work by the way, guys, he does work. He does do work on the house and he takes care of summer like really takes care of summer moon i love that i love that you know what i just thought about what let's say scandal didn't happen ariana and tom were still together and then ariana started her career started taking off in this other direction where she's getting brand deals she's on dancing with the stars wait she's on on, broadway you're saying if she did that even without scandal let's say scandal didn't happen they were still together as a couple and all of a sudden her career started really taking off like it is right now okay how would tom react being a payroll husband if he was called like i know they're not married but like in that sense like brock is is being a man and supporting sheena and helping her with the business and doing all of that yeah imagine if it was tom with ariana how he would react would he let her oh right you're saying he try his to, personality or would he try to one that? up and be like oh well, you know if ariana's doing this i gotta go and do this stuff right that's a good thought yeah whereas like brock it's you know it's coming back to now to he sold all his gyms and, you know, I think you talked about it in this episode where, you know, now that they're, they'll start to figure out like what's next for Brock in his career. And now it's time for him to sort of, you know, step back out. Yeah. I feel like you know more about Brock than I do, actually. Yeah, we're buds. <laughs> well, I'm just bringing like a different perspective, like being a man and kind of understanding like, you know, his thought process. I think. Right. Okay. Because so in our family, you make way <laughs> more money than I, yeah, I, you know, teaching you don't make anything and then now i do and i teach part-time now and i do the content creating also and the podcast which makes zero dollars because we don't have (laughs) advertising yet hopefully we do one day no no don't no (laughs) pg (laughs) what's the thing i used to do into my phone oh i have to tell them that secret oh the oh Samples. Okay, guys, you want to know a fucking secret? It's so good. You're going to love me if you don't know this. 
So I used to like Facebook. I hate Facebook now. By the way, Vanderpump on Facebook is wild. If you want to get annoyed, go there. If not, don't ever look up a Vanderpump group on Facebook or like a Vanderpump post because the comments are insane. They're so against Ariana. They are so just against everything that most people on Instagram, Reddit, TikTok are like, it's like the complete opposite. It's, it's a, it's a wacky world. But anyway, if you want samples, you could do this on Instagram or Facebook. Okay. Or if you want anything, it doesn't have to be samples. So I love different perfumes because I'm very particular about the perfume I wear. I'm a highly sensitive person, meaning we've talked about this before, but like being an empath, somebody who's empathetic to feelings, you actually, something I learned in therapy with multiple therapists didn't know this is like a diagnosable thing, but it is the highly sensitive person. You're you're sensitive to all your senses. So my sense of smell, my sense of hearing, and my husband knows this very well about me, my sense of smell, my sense of hearing, my sense of touch, all my senses are more sensitive. Like I'm more, they're more elevated. So I'm going off on a tangent, but I thought that was important for people to know if they don't know that about themselves. Like some people are highly sensitive to different sounds and smells and all that so yeah you'll walk around the house and be like do you smell that no, I i'm like how that. do you not smell that but oh, so not, the free oh, okay yeah. so i like to try different perfumes because i need to like wear it for a few days to know if i'm gonna like it i'm very particular i used to wear my j-lo glow in like high school and college and then they stopped making it or stopped making it as good now j-lo is i don't know what's going on with j-lo we just watched her documentary which is entertaining so i learned if you speak into your phone and you whisper while one of your apps are open, you'll start getting ads. So for instance, I'd just say, free samples, free perfume samples. What else? Like I'd be like, I want, <laughs> I want Givenchy samples. I want free perfume samples of Marc Jacobs. I would just say that. And then a few scrolls down, you just have to scroll down like five times. You'll start seeing your freaking pop up. Pop up. Would listens. you like free samples? Well, thank you, kind sir. I would love them. I'm like, fuck yeah, I want free samples. The amount of freaking samples that we got in the mail. So like many. All the and it helped though, because then I was able to you find a perfume too. that I loved. And I got you some. Anyway, a little helpful hint of the day. Pro tip. Pro tip. Oh, I was saying with <laughs> us, like you're making more money, obviously. But if I made more money, I've actually asked you this before. Like if there were ever a time in our life where I made more money than you did, way more money. How would you feel? I'd have to find a better job. Wow. I'm just kidding. How would you actually feel? No, I'm serious though. Cause I thought you would feel a little bit like, cause you're very much like, I like to provide, I want to do whatever. Yeah. I mean, even when we first started dating and everything, like, I felt like I always wanted to be the one to pay for the movie tickets or pay for, you know, dinner and stuff like that. But I never, that was just me being a gentleman, like, you know, the man in the relationship, gentleman? like, you know what I mean? Like, you're a gentleman. But, but I think scholar. that's, you know, that's more like the old school thinking. And now it's like. No, I would want you to do that anyway. I like that. I like being courted. But I'm saying, but I'm saying to have the money to be able to, you know, lead in the transactions. Whereas now, like, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't feel. Like, if I made a lot more money, would you just be like, yeah. No, I would just, I would support your career and whatever. Well, that's what I mean. I feel like you would be like, this is amazing. Yeah. Go, you yeah. Know. yeah. We're right or no? But you're very pro women, and I think that I don't know if it's because we've it's been because I'm a Swifty. Oh God, yeah, he is, guys. So no, I'm saying the, the I don't know if it's because we've been part of it. I think it's being together since we were like kids, and then. But I think the other part of it is probably having a daughter because you talk about this a lot. Yeah, I think being a girl dad, uh, it, it just automatically makes you more. Well, I don't want to say more. I, I was never like not pro women but like no, I know. like what am i trying to say here like i guess being a girl dad like it just like you you want everything for your kid and you know with her being a girl like you just want her to go and take over the world and like lead the world right yeah. like she doesn't need a man you know by her side yeah to to have to lead her and and you know i think that having that viewpoint definitely changes you know how you respond to things and, and act as a man yeah thanks i appreciate that about you um, <laughs> my eyes, my eyes teared up. Sorry, it's weird. Um, no, but I think it's good, and I think that's what's funny when we watch these shows. I mean, we watch the show for trash TV, but it's hard to not analyze them and be like, "How are you not seeing it this way, or how are you not doing this?" And 
I guess one of the things I like about Brock is I feel like he does look at Sheena as, yeah, go do your career, bitch. Go do that. And I like that. I'm not calling a bitch in a bad way, like bitch in a good way. I don't want to ever call her a bitch in a bad way. But anyway, that's it. Sandoval's an idiot. He's upset. And then we get to the big scene. The big scene. We're just going to take a quick break and give a shout out to Draw Me Bitch, the person who did our podcast artwork, who is amazing. Please check her out on Instagram and on TikTok. She also has her website, shopmebitch.com, where you can buy coloring books, stickers, gifts for all things Bravo. But she now has a subscription on her page, which gets you access to weekly Vanderpump coloring pages. Definitely go check her out. You will not regret it. And now back to the pod. Okay, actually, before we get to the big scene, we do need to talk more about Katie and Schwartz in the back because I feel like the sexual tension or just tension, attention tension between them was very high. What it's still think? there. As much as Katie, like, what? not hates him, but like sort of just loathes him. Is that the right word? You think she loves him? Like, I mean, you know, it's been Sometimes. years of, of him treating her, you know, poorly. But, I mean, the feelings are still there, right? Like she stayed with him for, for 12 years. and Well, she didn't. She was still in love with him when she left him. Like she said to Sandoval, she yeah. had to leave because he didn't treat her right and she deserved better. So it's so yeah. hard, probably. How do you do that? Like, how do you love someone and have to know that you can't be with them because they can't? I mean, you know, it just, it comes back to Schwartz just needs, uh, I, I mean, seeing Schwartz this season, I feel like, I feel like this year is going to be a bit of a turning point year for him. I'm hoping he sort of snaps out of it a little bit. He's on, you know, he's, he's not understandable's wings anymore. And, you know, he has life changing events. I'm, I can't, I'm still deep down rooting for them to like get back together See, one day, but like, I, I know that's very <laughs> not likely and. To me, it just goes back to the Jim and Pam, you know, Russ and Rachel thing. And I don't know why. See, I'm not, I mean, I still kind of am, of course, but I feel like if they're going to get together, it might need to be like 10 years from now. You know what I mean? Like he would need to do a lot of growing and I know she deserves so much more and I do feel like he can get there, but he literally needs to go to learn yeah. like why he does the things that he does. And the thing that has always bothered me was how much Sandoval put in his ear about Katie. And we even saw that in this episode in the extended scene that people did not get to see. Oh, horrible. What did he say? He was like, how's our little hypocrite or something? He was like, how's that? Yeah, how's that how's, little hypocrite doing? How's that little hypocrite doing about Katie with Max? But like saying it with so much like contempt. So much aggression. And it was just gross the way he was talking about her. And we're like, see, jerkwad, this, this right here is what you did all the fucking time to Schwartz about Katie feeding his head all this shit about Katie and you fucked up their marriage big time, okay? You fucked up their marriage big time. Maybe you weren't the sole reason Schwartz is the problem, but and because Schwartz listened to you, but you really destroyed that marriage to me by the shit that he would feed him. And if he didn't have Sandoval in his life, I really think they would have still been, to, or even not have him in his life so much. If he didn't have the restaurant, boys, the restaurants destroy marriages, huh? Jax's, and not all marriages, obviously. Maybe a lot of LA marriages but like it's really upsetting like to think about and to see Sandoval talk about her that way just so grossly and then like act all nice to her face which is why she like knows when she sees him and she's like cordial and nice then she'll like roll her eyes because she knows he's full of fucking shit because she's like me I think she can feel if you're full of it I could feel that shit real quick it's interesting I don't know yeah I don't think Schwartz listens to Sandoval anymore I mean in that scene you could in a lot of the scenes this year, you can tell that Schwartz almost like checks out a little bit when yes. those things come up. And like in that scene where Tom was asking him, like you could tell that I don't think Schwartz responded or do he was you, just like. But do you think he's checking out for the camera or do you think he would check out if the camera wasn't there also? I don't think it's just for the camera. Okay. I, I truly feel like Schwartz, because it doesn't seem fake to me. It kind of seems like he's he's just going back to like whatever's in front of him or his phone or his food. And he, he just doesn't want to hear it and doesn't want to be part of it mm -hmm. yeah no he doesn't and he the scene by the way was kyle chan schwartz and sandoval and they went to um, a place to eat bar slash restaurant and Sh sandoval was wearing the most horrid blue knit 
vest sweater thing with like pink or red roses all over it like embroidered it was literally oh i said sanibel schwartz's shirt was the worst but no way sanibel was way worse and Kyle and Schwartz, when he's talking, you could see their faces. Like Kyle looks visibly uncomfortable. Yeah, they don't. They don't really want to be part of what Sandoval's throwing out there because it's it's not right. Okay, so anyway, back to Katie and Tom. You dirty dog. <laughs> so Katie's like, "What is there anything you want to talk about?" And he's like, "Is there anything you want to talk about?" Yeah, I just love the elephant in the room. And <laughs> it's very funny because there's like this flirty banter between them. And he, even though they're talking about such a vile thing, she's a, sleeping yeah, it's such with a theirs. Weird, thing. She's like, you dirty dog. What I'm telling you is because I think he's kind of, it's okay, this is like a weird way to say it, but it's almost like endearing to him in a way that she's like doing her thing. Like he does, Schwartz does like a woman doing her thing. Even though he's an ass to women many times, he also likes a woman being in power. And doing their thing. So I do feel like it's like a really weird. I mean, Schwartz kind of needs a woman to tell him what to do in a sense. He needs a woman to lead him. So I think that's probably why he's drawn to women that would be like in that role. Yeah. Right, right, right. Um, And she's just like making faces, acting like coy about it. And then they talk about each other's outfits. And he does say to her, though, he's like, Max, like, that's my best friend. You fucked my best friend. Sorry. It's funny. I can say the F word all the time. But when I say it like that, it feels like I'm using a bad word. But when you say it as an action, as opposed to yeah, like, as opposed to an adjective. Yeah. Yeah. As I say it as a as a verb as opposed to an adjective so she's like yeah you did me dirty for 12 years she's like yeah that's what i did that's what i did and she just owned it like, yeah i did it (laughs) she was happy to do it i think she told him there too right that's when she said like it was like kind of she's like i don't really know why but she's like i guess kind of like a revenge thing and then he said basically this is where he's like like a clean slate everything is fresh now like i I, like you did so bad to me and now we're Starting it was, it was like it was almost like the light bulb like turned on like oh okay now we're clean let's shake hands let's mm-hmm. go out to dinner she's like no i'm not going to dinner with you not until you start making better choices like <laughs> like your clothing i thought that was really funny <laughs> that was really funny and he's like what's wrong with this well what's not wrong with it but then he points out her clothing which you were like he yeah points out her, he could- <laughs> like i mean i i mean i me personally i don't think it's like the coolest shirt is she saying it's the coolest but like he points out her shirt and then what do you say it's not uh i don't remember he it said, wasn't like the nicest comp but it was oh, also like playful and she was just playful back with it oh and something that's important is tom's like that was a flimsy agreement about the rachel thing and he, she's like no 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 but that's the problem that's why we're divorced because everything i said to you was like flimsy to you like he didn't take anything seriously yeah girl you got it you're right and he, he always wants to shy away. He'll be like, oh, we're not going to do this. We're not going to do this now. And he'll like walk away behind a plant or just get out of the conversation. Behind a plant. He's always trying to find a Well, in a this plant. scene, he's he's kind of like behind the pole. <gasps> oh, my God. So you know how he brings plants to people? Yeah, like I guess kind of like, like he he's bring the plants hiding behind the plant. It's like a to comfort. To sneak into their houses? No, to sneak into their houses. So there's always a plant in every house he's in that he needs to go hide behind? Hide behind. He's like a comfort thing maybe. It could be a comfort thing. Yeah. Oh, shit. Do I got to do a video on that? plant theory i mean even in this scene he's sort of like behind the pole a little bit yeah you know shoulder right. like it's almost like he likes being like a little bit protected by by something in his surroundings when he's getting uncomfortable yeah 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 you're right yeah. and like in the after show he's always resorting to his phone like he's hiding behind something at all times because what are you going to do in the after show go behind the couch no we can't do that yeah. shit so he's got his phone mm, i'm gonna like take one of the recent after shows yeah, he got on his phone and tom's just like what are you doing like we're filming a show. Yeah, no, he does it like the whole time because yeah. he can't. He's like it's when he gets uncomfortable and then he starts to fidget or like when Sandoval starts to say stupid shit. Yeah, Katie says like the one fuck up I have. Like you're so fucking lucky, and it's true. She never cheated on him. Whatever. That's how I feel. And then towards the end of that scene, even when he sort of reaches his hand out to Katie, like come on, can we shake and sort of agree to not bring it, bring up each other's past again? He just kind of wants to like move on let's ignore everything in his mind they're even now and let's like right. let's just sort of start fresh that's just symbol of it that's a very boy thing to do wouldn't you say it's a it, very it is. boy I, thing. i mean Girls i'm I'm, I'm very guilty of sort of like living in the moment like let's not talk about the past and i mean even when we get in like past fights and stuff you like to talk through it sometimes yeah. and like sometimes <laughs> a lot of times and like did you say if we get into an argument i like to talk through is that what you said yeah 
Yeah, that's what people should do. Like, I oh, remember when we talked about when we fought about this thing back then. Like, no, no, oh, no. see, I don't really do that as much anymore. It just kind of no, hit me. I more. used to do that. Well, I feel like we talked. I'd now. be like, no, I wouldn't be like 12 years ago. I'd be like, yeah, no, that's weird. No, I don't really do that anymore. That's weird. Why do you think that is? Well, I think because we address stuff more now. Oh, like, I used yeah. to not talk as much. Yes, that's true. In the past. And uh, there's obviously a lot more value in talking things out and addressing them in the moment or, you know, shortly after as opposed to just trying to ignore stuff and hoping it goes away. Yeah. Wait, in saying all this, I hope we don't sound like, oh, yeah, we do things perfectly because we absolutely don't do things perfectly. I just want to make that clear. Anything we're saying is not like to them, like to Vanderpump people. I'm probably saying this unnecessarily. Maybe that's my OCD being like, let me make sure that they know that we don't think we're better than anyone else. We're just saying that we know that in these moments with Vanderpump, like they're normal human beings and they're going through everything. We're kind of just like analyzing them as people on the outside who can actually look at everything like retrospectively. Not so not the word. Yeah, but. we're not we're not judging them saying that we're better than anyone in any of these situations. We're judging them as being reality TV stars that are making entertaining and bad decisions sometimes. Yeah. And that's what it comes down to. But yeah, so Katie goes to him, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not doing that until you start making better choices, like with clothing. And he's like, this shirt's awesome. And she's like, wool? Wait, because it's wool? Is that what she said? That'd be O-O-L? Wool, yeah. Oh, I, mean, I guess because he's, you know, what is this? A, <laughs> a summer day and he's wearing like a wool zip down polo. Very interesting choice. But then he points out her shirt too, which is, you know, an interesting shirt, but he makes the comment of like, you Why know, are you the, calling it a shirt? Oh, it's like a shirt it's dress. It's like a shirt okay. dress. Yeah. Like, yeah. But he made the comment of, you know, that that's not serving. And she's like, what? And she's like, what? But like, it was kind of just like playful. And she was kind of like yeah, laughing like, back. I'm just and kidding. I it was. just goes back to like, they still kind of have like that playful demeanor within them. Okay. So then he points out though, he's like pointing out that he hears yelling in the house and that takes us to just whatever <clears throat> is going on inside the house. So also when they're outside and the bell rings and and santa was like oh well you can hear the bell all the way from here it's <laughs> like a, a weird weird comment it, it just shows that he's got no like, social it's just like social game. awkwardness and then it kind of goes into the scene of like being in the, well, you in the can living hear room the bell from here like, with the what? girls sitting there and do you know what that reminded me of it i kind of had a feeling of like you know when you you're in an awkward situation or or even times that, you know if we've gotten in an argument and you almost like you kind of do a little too much or or almost do like above and beyond things around the bubble of like what that argument was. And it's like almost like to distract and like you see it on TikTok. No, that's what you do then. I don't do that. What do <clears throat> well, you I do? See, I see TikTok sometimes where it's like- Your you know, TikTok algorithm is so different than the mine. The husbands will post something like, uh, you know, after you know you get in an argument with the wife or something and it's like the <laughs> husband comes in and he's like- uh, 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 you know, oh, hey, is the dishwasher still working? Like, you just start asking these <laughs> random questions, like, to sort of break the silence. <laughs> like, Sandoval walking in, being, like, super awkward, like, looking around, like, oh, uh, let me go help you with the pizza. And Ariana's like, why is he doing the most? Like, yeah. Why, why is he doing this? When does he ever do that? She's Excuse like, me, sir, we need the ranch. And he, like, goes running out. It's like, he never runs. And just, it kind of made me feel like that same type of situation when you're you're almost, like, doing too much in the moment to, like, distract from the real the real bubble that's around the situation. Well, the the elephant in the room. But like very awkward. The, I love like I loved when he had to walk through the room, through like right in front of them to get to the door. You know, it's like the longest walk ever, and like you notice every little single thing around you. Like all of a sudden, your legs are moving weird, and your arms are moving weird, and you're like, how do I swing my arms? Like you know, you don't know where you're gonna look, right? When there's like people you don't really want to look at, and you're like, and you're, he's like looking up and running out the door and then gonna get the rent she's like she's doing the most right now why is he doing the most do they have ranch in their cars is that something they do in la do you think i mean i'm not here i need to ask her this because you what what they would just have ranch hanging out in the car or i guess the guy didn't have it he's probably just assuming that he left it in the, the pizza bag or something i love i just wish i had ranch with pizza right now i would hope you don't leave ranch in the car Probably can't be no, I don't mean that. What I'm saying is, are they like fully supplied with ranch at all times in case anybody in LA needs ranch with their pizza? They just drive around with a ranch dispenser and no, not a dispenser, car. just like a container of ranch packets, yeah. like a these, cooler yeah. of ranch packets or ketchup or barbecue sauce. I mean, yeah. yeah, so awkward as fuck. 
I love it. I literally live for these moments. Like, I love the awkwardness. I mean, I do – I get it. I feel a bit – like, if he hears her talking or whatever. But at the same time, I'm like, you did this. This was you. You – you whatever. It made your bed. Now you lay in it. Yeah. Is that the same? I, yeah. I love, like, cringe comedy. Not that this is comedy, but it gives me that same type of feeling of, like – I feel so cringe in this moment, but it's like so entertaining and it's pulling you in. Yeah. And you like almost like feel for the moment. Yeah. What I don't like and I find really annoying here is Ariana is talking about Sandoval and then Lala is like, all right, I'm getting pizza. Like she's so annoyed by this and I don't get it. By the way, guys, like looking at a bunch of clips this week, Lala literally many times talked about all the things she's complaining about with Ariana, which you you guys know, if you're a fan of the show and you've watched it for years, some of you are, and I know, I know some of you only started with season 10, but she has told people flat out, you cannot be doing this. You shouldn't be hanging out with my ex. I won't be friends with somebody who's friends with my ex. I understand Amanda's situation, but like making these straight up rules with her friends and then she's coming at Ariana doing the same thing. Lala freaks the fuck out of people all the time, had always done it. But now Lala is all of a sudden the the, the holy word of, of, I don't know, behavior. And it's like, what are you talking about? She's not allowed to freak out during this time. This is Ariana's time. You had your freak out time. Now this is her time to get through this, to heal, to grow. And I'm just even just like her getting up and being like, I'm getting pizza kind of annoyed me. Yeah, I should I bring up what I thought earlier, what I talked what? to you about. So like the whole Lala situation, I think it, it kind of just clicked for me earlier. So we're seeing a lot of stuff that, you know, that you've been posting that we've seen about, you know, sort of the finale, the reunion and, you know, sort of Lala's blow up and her and Ariana. And it got me starting to think about like this season and how Lala's being so like open to talking to Sandoval, going to his house you know, inviting him places, trying to start like on a new leaf. And there's that whole idea. And, and I, I personally think Lala is a little bit jealous of Ariana all of a sudden skyrocketing to having all of these opportunities um, because of what she went through with, with Tom. Not to say she's not deserving of those opportunities because she's very talented. But I think Lala just a little bit has in the back of her mind some intention about getting a little bit closer to open the door to Tom to get a little bit under Ariana's skin. See, that's what you think. And that's 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 what I think. Why do you think and she would do that? I think it's because a little bit of the jealousy that we're seeing and some of the comments that she's making, you know, this season and in the confessionals. She, I do think she's a little bit jealous of Ariana being almost on this pedestal and her way of like trying to like get under Ariana's skin a little bit. Is by opening the door to Tom. You think? Because otherwise, you I don't think see she's how, trying to like not see. I think she's trying to knock her down, but in other think, ways. You I, think? She's, I think through that a little bit because I, I don't see how like four months ago at the reunion she's ripping Tom a new one, Team Ariana, and now you know four months later, her her tune has definitely. Well, I don't know if you listen to my podcast, changed. but what I think is that she's doing whatever it is for the show. So whatever is going to get Lala more show and more showtime, that's what Lala is doing. And for her, I think she feels like if Ariana is not stand filming with Sandoval, I mean, and she said this actually, she said this flat out on her podcast this week, guys. She literally said this. So everything we've talked about before, she said this week on her Give Them Lala podcast, she had Heather McDonald on and Heather McDonald actually did a great job challenging Lala. She's very kind to Lala, of course. You can tell she's a fan, just like I'm a fan of Lala. I'm just annoyed at her right now. But challenging Lala with the stuff with Ariana, but she was saying how this is their job. This is how they make their money. She's filming. Like, they all need to film. This is how they, you know, pay their bills. And I think that she's doing whatever she thinks will keep the show going. And if that means what I think she's going to do, okay, is I think she's going to do this whole thing this season with going against Ariana, right? Then – the reunion, you guys know, if you follow the podcast, you know that I think Lala is going to go hard for Ariana at the reunion, not in terms of like yelling and all that, but from every single freaking podcast, we have all the clues there. And she's kind of saying it flat out too, that she is going to basically critique her and point out everything that Ariana is doing wrong. 
And I think, I thought Sheena was going to get involved with it. But then Sheena had a podcast today. And on Sheena's podcast, she was saying that she hugged Ariana at the end of the reunion. She told her she loved her. And, you know, she was explaining on her podcast to us that she just needed to get some things off of her chest and that she's talked to Ariana a couple times since then. So she doesn't understand why the public or the audience or whatever thinks that she's not talking to Ariana because of the whole Jeremy thing. We'll talk about that. I'll do a little more about this at the end of the podcast, like the extra news, of course, like we always do. But Sheena was saying that they're still kind of talking. So what I think is going to happen is I think Lala is going to come for Ariana and say shit from Sheena's perspective. And Sheena's going to be Sheena's, oh, I don't know. I love Ariana. That's not true. Like, you know how Sheena does that? The people pleasing. And I think that Ariana is going to be like, Sheena. Because Lala also says that she's upset about everybody from the reunion and she feels like she looks at everybody differently. So I think that Lala feels like Sheena didn't speak her truth with Ariana and that she is going to be annoyed at Sheena for this. She's still talking to Sheena. They went out that night after the reunion. But I'm just saying, I think that's what's going to happen. Yeah, I mean, there's no I'll evidence. talk about the, the other stuff later too, more with the yeah, reunion. Yeah, there's no but. evidence that like Sheena is going to speak what's really on her mind. We've seen the season where she's talking to Lisa about her feelings, but then doesn't tell Ariana. Ariana and Ariana's asking, like, just just tell me if you're really feeling this way. And Sheena's, you know, about dancing telling the, the, the different story. So, you know, I, I think I think Sheena in, in general just avoids any sort of confrontation that would make yeah. it look like she's against anyone, especially Ariana. Yeah, I think, but I do think this is, and, and you guys know, like, I I love Sheena, but I also think Sheena is so ridiculous with the many times I didn't like her dancing with the stars comment, like her backhanded comment. I don't like certain things she's been saying on the after show but that's just another clue there to me that's saying look she's feeling these things but she's not really saying them and i think she's gonna do the same thing at the reunion i think she's gonna sheesh pretty hard at the reunion and and do what she's always done which is kind of like say her feelings but not fully say them but i also think she doesn't fully even here's the thing guys here's what i've realized about sheena oh my god i have to say this sheena will tell each person also what she thinks they want to hear not in not and I don't think she's doing this in a manipulative way. I think she's truly not wanting to hurt people and wanting to people please and wanting to make people happy. But I think that everybody gets a different version of Sheena and they all think they have Sheena's truth. But like who actually has Sheena's truth? Probably only Sheena, maybe Brock. So like I think Lala's hearing shit from Sheena but doesn't fully understand everything. Then Ariana's hearing shit from Sheena, doesn't fully understand it. Lisa's hearing shit from Sheena. Sandoval's hearing shit from Sheena because we know Sandoval's going to have a scene with her. I don't know if it's in the finale, which some inside tea I got. It's going to be like a two two episode event, the finale. When I say the finale, I mean like the San Francisco like final party event. I had a source that was there also. And um, there was a lot that went down. So I think that we are going to get a big event and I think Sheena, Sheena has a moment with Sandoval, like where they hug and we've seen a preview of this. So I think she like just she does end up telling people her own version for each person. And that's where she gets herself in trouble. And people say like a friend to everyone is a friend to none. I truly don't think she's doing it purposely. I think she's doing it honestly not just for herself, but because she does care about people. I know people, a lot of people can't stand Sheena and don't see her that way, but I do see her as, I see her very, you know, selfish also, but I do think she cares about people and I do think she has a good heart in there. And I think she does love Ariana, but is upset by some things like having to be told you cannot have a friendship with him because then and I guess Ariana didn't say this flat out, but she did. She said it without saying it. She was just like, yeah, you can have that friendship, but I'm not going to be friends with anybody who whatever. So I think Sheena's upset about that, and as she should be. I don't think Ariana should be putting those you know, demands on people, but I get why she's doing it. She's upset. She's hurt, and she doesn't want to have him as part of her life. There's just a lot there. Better so be. your thought about Lala is definitely different than my thought, but they've heard my thoughts about Lala before. I'll- yeah, and I, I wasn't thinking that before. Like literally just – clicked in my mind today when we were rewatching the episode again and it's just just an idea I had. that maybe she's trying to bring love but maybe she's, she's she, trying to get under her skin that would be so fucked up though yeah 
I, I think trying to knock yeah. her down a little because she I has too so. much. I think yeah, almost like a. No, I think that too. But you think it's specifically like trying to get under her skin with Sandoval. I think so. I think it's. I think it's almost like going against the authority. You're like, don't don't tell me. Oh yeah. I can't be friends with him while you're off getting everything. Don't tell me don't what to do. Tell me what to do. She doesn't like that authority. You That's know what I mean, true. and like, yeah. and then I guess in the finale it comes to like a, just a bigger blow up. I, I just, I just feel like that. Well, you know, in the finale, so Ariana is going to leave. You know, Ariana Lala is going to freak the fudge out, and that's when oh, she's going to say the God comment. She's going to freak out, and then we saw the not the behind the scenes. I can't remember where we saw that little clip. A lot of people didn't see it though. What we've talked about it before, mm-hmm. where Sandoval is like, she talks shit about all you motherfuckers, and then he goes off in his slimy aggressive state that he does when he's upset and he wants to just break you know which i thought about guys how many times do you think sandoval acts like that behind closed doors like that aggression that he's calling ariana out for how many times did he actually do that that's what i want to hear from ariana ariana doesn't really talk shit on people i'm like girl you know what go talk shit on him i know she does it to take the high road i love that but also if he did this shit, I want to hear it because people aren't talking. And he's over here running around town telling everybody all this shit about well, her. Well, now, like in these extended scenes that are coming out, it's like, you know, he's saying Ariana is, you know, what do you say, lazy as shit or whatever he said exactly. Like, as more comes out, if he's saying stuff about her and trying to pull her back down and those aren't necessarily true, maybe she will come out and say more about him. But I, I don't think she's going to start stooping to that level of, let me just you know, write a tell all book about Tom Sandoval because she's she's more powerful than that. She's taken the high road. I know she is, but it sucks because And she and she's not she's not a petty person. I don't think she's gonna come back and start nitpicking all the things about him because I mean I think she's petty, but maybe not in the same way. All right. So then Sandoval is in the kitchen and this is the scene. Ariana's at the table and she says to Brock, the attempted drug murderer was eavesdropping. The timing was perfect just as Sandoval was walking by. Do you think maybe she planned to say it just as he was walking by? Like, <laughs> yeah, do you think I mean, she saw like, him sort of corner of her eye? He's, about, he's coming in. And I mean, the timing was perfect. I think she knew to say it loud enough so that happened. And Brock is there and he's like, who's the attempted dog murder? And Sandoval goes, oh, she's referring to me. It was just so awkward. So, I mean, the whole Sandoval stopping and, and just staring was very reminded me of like the Sheena stare down when she was when she saw Kyle and and, uh, and Tom at dinner and they were kind of just like staring oh, at each yeah, other yeah, for like yeah. ten seconds Boy, awkwardly. That feels so long ago now. It was uh it kind of reminded me of that. Which by the way, they did say that wasn't planned that she was going to see him on the way there, which I thought was interesting. Obviously, Sandoval was set up with Kyle having their dinner. They were somewhere else, but that wasn't planned for her to walk by. Oh yeah, I didn't think that was planned. It was way too oh, naturally a lot of awkward. Yeah, it was very awkward. So she says this, and oh, she's hi, that's me. She's referring to me. Um, now this is a very controversial thing. Everybody at the table looks super, super uncomfortable. And when I look at the debates about this online, it's like you're one way or the other way, basically. I kind of see it in the middle, but the main way I see it, and I did a video about this, is that she is clearly more upset about him leaving the dog in the room for a few hours unattended. And I get that part because I said this to you. Like, when would we not know where our bear is? We would always know where he is. Yeah, I mean, our dog gets into literally everything. And we have to make sure we're not leaving stuff out that he could chew up and bite. But more importantly, we just know where he is at all times in the house. It kind of reminds me, though, of like of our pantry. Like, we have to close the pantry door oh, even the pantry door because he'll go in and yeah, just get stuff. Well, the cabinet last episode, I talked about the Pontotoni when he ate the Pontotoni and we had to take him to the animal hospital yeah. and we were out of the house and he literally jumped on like the four foot breakfast bar, which is like a bar, you know, bar height, not regular counter height. And he jumped up on that, ate the Pontotoni, and then we had to get him in the crate after that when we weren't in the house. So the idea is more and but Tom Sandoval was home. Like for me, I understand be, why she's more upset because yes, I do think it's should she be leaving chicken satay skewers on the nightstand? No, but no. like she's drinking the night before. They went out the night before. She's living in that room as basically her house or apartment. It's like her sanctuary, yeah. And so I 
so I do want to know how you feel, but I feel like I I don't blame him. I I think her calling him a dog murderer or an attempted dog murderer. Yeah, I mean there was no attempt at a murder here, so that's that's a little extreme. But I I don't think Ariana should have left the food, but because it's her room, the door's closed. I think there's there's a little more blame on Tom here for more just the awareness of where the dog is in the house, especially with him knowing that the dog gets into stuff, right? Yeah. We talked about it earlier in last episode, you know, the dog getting into the the 400 laxative pills or whatever it was. 500 laxative pills. Yeah. I mean, if like, I have a dog that gets into stuff like that, like you're going to want to know where they are in the house at all times. At all times. How do you not know where they are at all times? And so to I lock do- the dog in the room, you know, right. by accident or whatever, like just- no, and, and here's the thing. I do get, no, like you can't know where they are literally at all times because you have to have your own life too. It's just that as a as a parent, a dog parent, a parent of a child, like we know where they are when they're here. And if we don't for a second, it's like, oh, where's Bear? And you know what I'm saying? It wouldn't be four, it wouldn't be hours. Yeah, I mean the it main difference. It might be dif- an hour. It might be. I, I think the main difference here is is a dog who, doesn't get up to trouble. I and mean, there's plenty of dogs out there that are just right, super yeah, chill. They'll just lie around. They'll lie in your bed for hours upstairs or something. They're not going to get into stuff. Yeah. But then there's dogs like our dog and, and Maya apparently now is like they're dogs that will get into stuff Yeah. and they'll eat stuff that they don't even know if it's good for them or not. And those are the ones that you kind of have to be aware of where they are in your house at all times. So like for that reason, Tom is to blame here for leaving the dog locked in the room and just not being aware of where the dog was while Tom was the one home in the house as um, the adult. The attempted dog murder, I think is just her way right now to like crucify him. Cause she hates him and I don't blame her. Like she hates him. She's going to say the worst possible things oh, yeah. to him in this moment. And I get it. Like I think on the internet, there's a lot of people who are not like this. I mean, they're much more well balanced, I guess maybe <laughs> I'm not, <laughs> but like I would be to the person who did this to me, it would not be nice. I would not be nice. And I was if I was in the same situation as she was, I'd be raging at him too, I feel like. Especially after something like this. It'd be like, fuck. Like she said, first you have up my home and then you attempt to kill my dog. She shouldn't have yeah. said attempt because he didn't attempt to kill it. But no. I do think he was hurt. I mean, I feel for him in that way, even though I would hate him in her position. I'm like, okay, it probably totally sucks for him to be like, that was – stupid of me and it was a mistake it was neglectful and now i'm being called a an attempted dog murderer i feel for him in that way not so much but i do think it, it's a little bit too harsh it's just that she's she's hateful towards him and she has a right to be hateful towards him that's how i feel yeah i mean in some way that i mean if tom kind of stopped and think you know thought about it for a second that was an opportunity for him to almost like take down his wall a little bit and say, you know what? I didn't attempt to kill the dog, but I wasn't aware of where the dog was in the house. You know, I effed up there and just, and just acknowledge that and own it. And it it wouldn't have escalated to that. What do you think it would have done for her if he did that? I I think she still would have been pissed off with just sort of the the carelessness and the callousness as she says. Yeah. But do you think it would have disarmed? I think it would have disarmed her a little bit because it's, it wouldn't be the reaction she would be expecting. Right. I absolutely think it would have disarmed. And it would have gave Tom, you know, a, a, a couple of points, I think. <laughs> yeah. He doesn't know how to do that. It would have disarmed her, I think. And I think it would have given her a second to be like, I'm upset. I'm hurt. I'm angry. Okay. He gets that he was an ass in this moment, even though he doesn't get he's a, you know, but the problem is he doesn't do that. No. He doesn't know how to just, he just is like angry and hateful back. And well, he deflects. Think? He jumps to the, the cat. Oh, well, you haven't cleaned your, your cat litter box for almost two years. And it's like, okay, now, now we're jumping to that because he's deflecting to something else. Ariana, you haven't emptied the litter box for your cat in over two years. And then they show her, she's like, I did it last week when you're away. And then they show footage of her. He doesn't believe her. And they show footage of her cleaning the cat shit, which was 10, 10 stools. I don't know. I don't have a cat. I think, well, we used to have a cat. My family used to have a cat growing up. But and my family all has cats except for me because I'm allergic. But I do think 12 shits is probably a lot. She probably should be cleaning it more. However, he also knows that she deals with a lot. And, you know, you clean the shit in this house, dog shit. Yeah, not in house, outside the house. But yeah. if he ever Hopefully has, a- if he ever had accidents in the house and you were home, you cleaned. Yeah, the I shit. would go clean it. 
if I was home, I cleaned the shit. But like, I'm not gonna be like, yeah, I'm gonna clean the shit if you clean the shit. But I feel like if that was one of the responsibilities he did, that's what he chose to do. And you know what else pisses me off? He's acting, well, we'll talk about with the, the hidden scene, but he acts like she's a lazy piece of shit. Meanwhile, she fucking did everything for him and controlled him so much. And look what happens when she's not there. He's taking photos with tigers and posting them on the internet. She, he owes her so much because she was his PR. She was his, you know, don't do that, Tom. This isn't a good idea. This isn't a good look. All that. Correcting him when he would say, what do you say about cis male? I don't remember. Oh, I don't think you got to that yet. You didn't get to that yet. No. But she was there to make sure that he didn't look like the ass that he acts like. Yeah. And yeah, maybe you had to clean some cat shit, but she's basically wiping your ass for, for 10 <laughs> years. That's how I feel. What? Do you feel like that? I, I mean, yeah, I agree with that. <laughs> okay. So what's next? What is next? Oh, and she says to him about the room, too. She's like, that's the only safe space I had in that house because you fucking wrecked it. Uh, yeah, you're right, girl. Yeah, I mean, being in your own home and having a safe space that you can go to, especially in this environment where she's still living with her ex and the person that did this to her, it's invasive yeah. for him to be going into her room. I get it. He's doing something with the AC or whatever. Can I ask you something? What's up with them and ACs? Like, why are his ACs always failing? What do you think he's doing? His a his ACs are always an issue. Oh, I don't know. He, he said he was closing vents or something like that. Oh, he was just closing a vent? Why didn't he have Anne do that? I think that's what he said. Yeah, eh? no, you're right. I think he did say that. I think some houses, they, you know, you close certain vents if you want the air to, you okay, know, direct so more to one Sandoval, why didn't you have Anne do that? That's my question. Why would you even go in her room? Well, because Anne's picking up the socks and underwear. underwear. She that's can't true. do everything. That's true. It's too much for Anne. Yeah. Okay. Um, poor Anne. We love Anne. That's why Anne left. That's why Anne left. She doesn't want that. She wants to do like administrative work. All right. Okay. What's next? Yeah. And, and I mean, then it escalates now and Ariana is screaming. I think she says it like five times. Don't, don't fucking look at me. Sandoval's like, Ariana jumped from accident to drug murderer. And then he says, why don't you respond to an email, but she's in the middle of listing something, and she's like, a second of all, what was she? <laughs> <laughs> that's great. Because, again, he's just trying to deflect, and I, I get it, you know, that's top of mind for Sandy. So I was like, stupid. you know, I sent you an email, and, you know, in the previous episodes, he went up to them, and- What do you mean that's top of mind? He's just- I'm putting... saying, it, it, this is, because he's been talking about this email since, what, two episodes ago. Oh. Right? So this has just yeah, been yeah, on top yeah. of mind for him. Like, I sent an email, I want to, you know, I want to- Okay, so when we've gotten in arguments in the past, you used to do that, though. You Send used you to emails, do, yeah. Yeah, you used to do <laughs> the same thing. You used to be like, you'd bring up something random. Like when we were, you'd be like. Did you read my apology email? No, I'm talking about something random. Like, well, I put the dishes away. <laughs> and then he says, put on your big girl panties and respond to an email dig he's just digging he's just digging at her by the way she has not been floating around saying anything about him anywhere anywhere nowhere nowhere and he's just digging 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 and making it seem like she's a freaking villain even though he's the one who slept with somebody to make himself look not as bad guess what you don't have to make yourself look not as bad by putting somebody else down you could just say what you did wrong and people will be like he gets it He's getting it. He's an asshole, but he's understanding that he's growing. He's going to therapy. He's talking about it, whatever it is. He doesn't need to put her down. he That's his biggest flaw. He doesn't know how to accept and acknowledge what he did without making another person look bad. Yeah. I mean, we see it in public all the time where people go on apology tours for something they did. And it's like, you own it. The public forgets about it then like down the, the road. and people. like, Yeah. But he's going the opposite, right? He's, it was almost like digging into it more to try to defend what he's done based on things around him and it's just it's not a good look and it's not working for him it's what's gonna make it take longer for him to fully get back into the group i think by the way i had half of a cider beer so and i don't normally drink so i'm like a little feistier with my words maybe so feisty all right don't be weird <laughs> all right um no no i did do think the email thing <laughs> when she's like my lawyer will be emailing you, not me. My lawyer will be responding back. And then you could tell she's like trying to say something, like think about what she did. She was like with a very well thought out email. And he's like, well, two months better be. You know, 
yeah, why is it taking two months for the lawyer to get back to him? I, what do you think? What do you? What do you? I mean, I think Ariana's response there. She's she's just heated. She's just throwing back like, okay, he's working on a response. Like, no, but why she, do you think the lawyer isn't getting back? Do you think so? Some people have like a theory that she is trying to prolong everything because she doesn't want to like deal with the pain of it. And then other people are like, he, she just has a lawyer that doesn't respond back to things. I I don't know if it's no, I, I don't think it would be the lawyer. But I don't know if what she. Mean, why would a I, lawyer take two? I should. I'm, I'm guessing based on other things we've seen. You know, she's she's got her interior designer coming to the house. They've been looking at the cost of things. I think she's probably. Again, we have to remember this is you know four or so whatever months after everything went down, she's still processing stuff. She's still in the house that she's, you know, that she built with him and and all the furniture and and things that they they bought and we're finding out she bought a lot of it. So she's trying to go through this list and process everything. And, and at the same time, I think she's also, you know, possibly being a little bit slower on her end just to, you know, not give in to Tom. And, you know, yeah. Tom wants nothing more than boom, quick close. I get the house. You can move out. And she's like, no, you don't. You're not getting that. Okay. So we need to talk about this. There was a great Reddit post today and I asked the girl if I can share and if I should share her name and she said I could. So her name on Reddit is Gracie James 1082 if you want to look for the post. And the title of the post is What was Sandoval's plan with the house if he had stayed with Rachel? So I'm going to read the post because I thought it was interesting. Sandoval's absurd audacity in the fight for this house got me thinking if things had gone according to his plan and Tom had ended up with Rachel, did he expect that Ariana would just move out? Rachel would move into the house with him and they'd live happily ever after <laughs> he fucking did of course i would bet that if the affair was never exposed he would eventually he would have eventually moved into her crappy sublet either way there's no scenario that would have allowed him to escape ariana fighting him for the property so i thought that was a great question thank you gracie because and thank you for letting me share because i feel like yes <laughs> And this is probably why Ariana is so pissed because she's like, bitch, you would have gotten Rachel, moved into the freaking house. That's what you were going to do if all – and I want actually wanted to bring this up to you guys. Remember, at this point, Ariana doesn't really know what's going on with Sandoval and Rachel. So she knew Rachel had sent letters to the house. She's probably hearing at this point that she's not really responding to him. But what does she know? She doesn't know what to believe. Nobody's talking to Rachel. Nobody. In fact, I had a behind the scenes video from right, right around this time. Maybe it was like a few weeks earlier. And I overheard Ariana saying to producer Jerry something like, Rachel is a no. So, or Raquel is a no, um, which I always thought was so interesting. Like, what are they talking about? And Lake Tahoe, Rachel was supposed to go to Lake Tahoe. So I'm just saying it's like not too far off in time. She doesn't know what's going on with them. Do you think she wants to just leave the house and be like, sure, the girl who slept with you for seven months, who was my friend behind my back and on national television, could just move into the house with you and you could set up some pretty bedrooms with all the linens and towels, all the cutlery that you want, make it your own, and I'll just move the fuck out because... You know, oh, yeah. I'm the bigger person. And we'll see on future seasons of Vanderpump Rules, it'll be Tom and Rachel living Imagine. in the house. I mean, that would that would eat into Ariana. But exactly. Like, how dare you? So she's right in, in saying like, you know, I mean, in this situation, yeah, no one should, should have the house, I think. And that's what bothers me with Lala. Like, why is Lala just being like, just give it to him? I get it. She's right. He's not that person. He's probably not the person to give it up. He's not the person to give it up. But- why does she have to do it? Like, why can't people fight for her? Why couldn't they be like... Imagine you went through this and then you're watching on TV your ex having parties and having his new relationships and, you know, in, in the house Yeah. that you've lived in with him for all those years and you've decorated and, and all of that. Yeah, no, it's Imagine horrible. That. No, it's so horrible. And then the decorating comes up next, actually. But, man, that pisses me the... Like, when I think about that, I'm like, gosh, the poor thing. Like, of course she doesn't want to give up the house to him. Of course she doesn't. People be rude about that. Like, Lala was yeah, rude about so that. I mean, everyone's saying, oh, it's out of spite. She's being difficult. It's, it's not out of spite. I think she has a right. Oh, my gosh. Somebody had to post a comment about And actually, uh, I know we talked about Nick Vile a little bit before. I, I mean, when Tom was on Nick Vile's podcast, one of the things that did stand out to me was Nick was very sort of direct with Tom about like, well, she, she has a right to be, you know, 
yeah. spiteful mm-hmm. and treating like this. Like, doesn't she have that right? And, you know, and to Nick's credit, he was very, um, you know, sort of uh, direct with Tom. You know, Nick's feedback. good with yeah. that shit. I'm only annoyed at that Nick was a with great the Sheena interview. thing. I'm just... Great interview from Nick's side, not Tom's side. Yeah. Oh, my God. Tom showed up to that. We might have talked about this on the podcast before, but he Tom showed up like that from, to that interview, either still drunk from the night before or, or just severely hungover and he was and then Schwartz by the way guys I don't know if you heard this if I ever talked this but about this but I thought that's what happened and then Schwartz did say that on another podcast that that's what Tom was he literally said the same thing so for Tom to act like Ariana is such a fuck up and a lazy piece of shit and all these things he said we keep talking about this and not actually getting to that scene it's coming up it's coming up but just for him to talk about her like that, knowing the way he acts and knowing that she had to manage all of his shit. He needs an assistant to buy his batteries, paper towels, and toilet paper. If you guys never saw this, Anne had put up a post saying, like, that's me. The person who bought the paper towels, batteries, and toilet paper was Anne, not Tom Sandoval. <laughs> so he just told Anne to get it. You know, I tell her to do things. And then he takes credit for him doing everything at the house. What Did, did you have in? <gasps> Should I message Jan right now and ask her if she cleaned the litter box? Oh, that's a great I'm going to say inquiring minds need to know, did you clean the litter box? <laughs> oh, my God. You tell the listeners, please listen to the end for the answer. What? No, I don't do that kind of weird <laughs> shit. You know, like YouTube videos, they try to get you to watch the yeah, whole thing. Yeah, no, I don't do that to them. I don't do that to them. I don't do that to them because these podcasts are long, and that's why I give them the timestamps because I'm like, I know I can't. It's so annoying when I listen to a podcast and I don't remember where I left off if I open another one or if you just want to hear certain things. But anyway, what was the point? The point is that that's why she doesn't want to give up the house. Should we tell everyone what the one piece of cutlery they should have in their house is? I think so. I don't know what you're about to say. You don't know what I'm about to say. Spork. A spork. Do you agree? I mean, I do like a spork. Do you want to tell them why? <laughs> because why I'm saying what I'm trying to do is give a PSA because – a lot of people don't have sporks. If you don't have sporks in your house, I highly recommend buying sporks and keeping them in your house because why are you looking at me like that? I'm waiting to see what you're going to say. I'm just letting them know they need a spork. Why Do you not think sporks are one of the best tools for serving food? I'm just letting them know a lot of people don't get sporks. We got sporks later in life. We got sporks only a couple years ago. Well, sporks are more of an, an adulting utensil. No, they're not. <laughs> but what food can't you eat with a spork? But also, what food would you say is so much better with a spork, would you say? What food is better with a spork? Um, it's really so hard to think about. What's the top food? The, literally the absolute top above all. I'll be honest. I never choose a spork to... Mac and cheese. Oh, mac and cheese. That's a good one. That one drives me nuts. Mac and cheese, you don't know. Do you need a spoon? Do you need a fork? Get a spork. I do love mac and cheese with a spoon. Oh, God. If it's the smaller noodles. But my question is... But sometimes it falls off. Right. But I like... I almost like the taste of having it with a spoon better. But if it falls off... But don't and then you... A fork when doesn't you have work, the spoon, you don't have you miss having the fork? And if you have a fork, you miss having the spoon. This is why, like, just by sporks... This is where the spork comes in. Mashed potatoes, much better. Any kind of thick soup or stew, beef stew, broccoli and cheese soup, much better. Much easier, especially if you have the bigger chunks of broccoli. If you need to be able to like stab something to pick it up, but yeah. you also need the surface area of a spoon. Right. If you have chili and you have corn. Um, oh, chili. Chili's a good one. Cornbread in the middle of the chili, get a spork. Get a spork. Okay. I'm just letting them know. It's a really good investment. We got ours on Amazon. I would get higher quality sporks if I could go back. If I'm rich one day, I will get like, um, what's that brand? Mikasa. Maybe they make sporks. <laughs> do you think they do? Mikasa? Lennox? Do you think Lennox makes sporks? A good old Lennox spork. I'm going to look it up right now. We should have put sporks in our wedding registry. I know. That's why I'm telling people now. That they had Lennox, Lennox sporks. Lennox sporks, I'm just saying. No, they don't make them. Do you want to make a spork with me? Because we'll make... A prettier spork, and it'll make a lot of money, and then we'll make TikToks. You want to do that? <laughs> yes or no? Sure, why not? I had half a cider beer. Okay, ready? Let's go back to the show. All right. 
No, like, do you tell me, are you not serious? Do you not understand what I'm saying? I mean, I do like a spork. Okay. I mean, even, I mean, even in, in school growing up, we used to get sporks. That's what they give out in the cafeteria. Oh, yeah. With those sporks. That was your first introduction to the plastic spork. I really think mashed potatoes or like an Asian food is really good with the spork. Like a fried rice, perfect for a spork. Oh, yeah. Where you're picking up like chicken However, with the rice. Yeah. A lo mein, not so much. I mean, rice with a fork is horrible. Rice with a fork, not good. Rice with a spoon, you even worse. Sp- well, a spoon is good, but then you can't eat the rest of the meal with a spoon. You would you like your rice with a spoon? That's too wide. I mean, if I... Yeah. Uh, yeah. We're just going to take a quick break to give a shout out to our friend Peyton. She is glorified gossip girl on Instagram. Right now, her account is down because of weird rules that don't make sense. So please go follow her backup at Glorified Gossip Girl, but with a U for the girl. And she also is Glorified Vintage Girl. She does amazing work. A lot of Bravo lebs wear her and order from her, including Ariana Maddox, Daniela Vera, Katie Maloney. Go check her out and support her. Her website is on her IG page or it's www.distressout.myshopify.com. She is a super hard worker. She's great at what she does and she's an amazing person as well. And now back to the pod. All right. So, so, so the then kitchen says, scene then escalates to, yeah, with the, with the well, lawyer. Okay, the email. Yeah. And then she's like, why are you talking to me? Why are you talking to me? And she's like, you left the door open last night. One more example of your carelessness and your callousness when it comes to my fucking dream house and my children. Callousness? And, this is, this, and that's what he says, yeah. This is where he hears her wrong. He's like, your children? And then he goes out of the house and he's thinking the whole time and he repeats it out loud. He's thinking she meant like my children in my dream house. She was talking about her pets as her children in the house, all she was saying, the callousness when it comes to my fucking dream house and my children, not the not the house my children will grow up in. He like misheard her because he wasn't actually listening. Yeah. So they had the conversation about the lawyer and the email and then it starts to escalate and, and basically Ariana then goes to Tom, never look me in the eye again, you fucking piece of shit. And she says, you know, basically calls him a piece of shit. I think she repeats that about five times. And he goes, she goes... Don't you fucking look at me. Don't you fucking look at me. Don't you fucking look at me. As he's walking out of the house. Don't look me in the eye. You already got everything, Ariana. You got all the campaigns. Now you're going to take my assistant. Yeah. And again, back to Anne now. You know, Tom is, uh, I guess, a little hurt also about Anne leaving him and Ariana coming in and potentially poaching Anne. So he jumps back to that. And that's his way of, you know, sort of deflecting back to something else that's centered around him, I think. You ruined my home and then fucking attempt to kill my dog by locking her in there for hours. You got Schwartz saying to Katie, you see they were fighting <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. as Tom's walking out. And uh, and then that's kind of where we... Wait, and then Katie's like, okay, I won't fuck anymore as a friend. Okay, so this is where I did a video on TikTok that night because it was just bothering me because I kept seeing comments about how Ariana is so angry and rageful. Oh my God, freaking Bravo. Instagram comments are very against Ariana and it was bothering me. And I'm like, I'm not going to sit here, just watch this happen. And so I did a video that night where it was very passionate, um, but it got big on Instagram and Ariana saw it and liked it. And she liked some of my comments. And then our friend Glorified Gossip Girl, who you always add in, uh, here in our ads, also reposted it. And Ariana also liked her post and liked my comment there and a bunch of comments on these posts. And I wanted to let you guys know that because I didn't share it to my page that she did that. But today I ended up sharing it to my stories because so many people were messaging me saying, I hope Ariana saw your post. I'm like, you know what? They want to know that she sees this and that she feels like people understand her. And so I shared that on my stories and people were messaging me saying, thank you so much for sharing that. So I'm sharing it here because I loved that she heard that people were feeling a certain way about it. So in the video I was explaining, which like now that we're through this whole scene, I want to speak on how I was actually feeling because even though we're recapping, the way I was feeling when I was watching it was different. All I felt was, and this is what I talked about in the video that I posted, was sadness and like pain for her in this moment, in this scene. Like we're saying the way she's yelling and all that, but like truly, you know, being what's 
called an empath or highly sensitive or however you want to say it. I just, my eyes were like welling with tears because I'm like, this girl is so upset and so sad and it's coming out as anger and rage and that's what happens. Like when you're so hurt and you feel so let down and also I think when you feel like somebody who you thought loved you so much doesn't and abandon, like kind of abandon you, it can come out like that as anger and rage. So I just felt so much for her. And so when people are talking bad about her, I'm like, are you even thinking about why she's acting like this? And even though like we hate what Sandoval has done and we don't like Sandoval, like we're always kind of like, "Mm, okay, but like, why is she doing this? Like the dickwad is bringing up her not changing shit because he's so hurt that she's calling him a dog murderer. (laughs) I'm calling him a dickwad. But like, you know what I'm saying? Like, there's always a reason for somebody doing something or saying something. And the reason why to me she is acting like that is because she is in so much pain over this. And I truly feel like she felt abandoned. And one of the comments that I had written and she had liked that I was really surprised about that she had liked it was our girl needs some freaking understanding and to not, in caps, feel abandoned. And so that's exactly what I thought she felt and she liked that. And I feel like that's so important to know that she needed that understanding to not feel like her friends were like, what's wrong with you right now? But to be like, are you okay? And I do feel like Sheena did feel that. And you can see in her confessional, like as much as people want to talk shit about Sheena, I think Sheena really obviously cares a lot about Ariana, even though Sheena is, Sheena could be petty AF. Sheena loves the attention on her too. She'll do anything for that attention. I think she truly does love Ariana. And she said she was feeling for her. She was feeling, you know, she said it was so hard to see her friend in pain. So I was glad that she felt that. But then I honestly feel like Sheena has Brock in her ear just being like, she shouldn't be this angry. And then it, and it makes Sheena question. It's funny because Brock gets annoyed at Sheena who has OCD. If you've never listened before this episode, I have OCD also. And at one point, I mean, it's it's still not good. But at one point, it was extremely severe where it was like debilitating OCD. And OCD is a very, very difficult disorder. And so it's interesting because Brock tells Sheena, like, you shouldn't listen to your mom about everything. Like, your mom's trying to make everything perfect and say you do things wrong, you do things wrong. But, like, he's actually doing the same thing to her when he's telling her all the time, like, how she should feel, you know. Um, And I don't know if he realizes that. But, you know, he's just like, Ariana should be doing this. And Sheena, as somebody with OCD, I think has such a hard time knowing, like, is this right? Is that right? Is this right? Is that right? Like, second guessing herself. Again, it's called the doubting disorder. So I just feel like she's struggling so much. And what she needs to do is rely on her gut and what she really feels and what she really wants. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And and that's kind of why you see Sheena going back and forth at times, because I think she is in her in her mind struggling mm-hmm. about how she should be feeling or is feeling. Yeah. I mean, I think she really wants a relationship with Sandoval, unfortunately. Like, she loves Sandoval. She does. But she wants that relationship with Ariana. And I think this is where Ariana will have to learn to just say, we can, of course, be friends, but I need my boundaries. Like, I don't want you ever talking to me about him. Even though we're filming together, I don't want to talk about him on the side. I want to know shit, you know. A really important boundary that I learned in my own therapy is that when you have somebody who you don't want as part of your life, but another person is friends with them or friendly with them, letting them know, like, if you're going to talk to them, just do not ever talk to them about me. And that is a completely valid and reasonable thing to ask and is a boundary that should be easily easily accepted and understood because you might talk to them about things but don't ever talk to them about me um and there are some people who respect that and some people who don't and if sheena has these boundaries if ariana makes these boundaries with people and people don't respect them then ariana can evaluate do i want to hold this relationship or not and of course, Ariana is worried about having somebody be friends with her because look at the way they're handling it, even on the beach day, bringing up Sandoval's date, not Sheena, the boys, stupid, bringing up Sandoval's dating in front of her, you know, 
Actually, Stanival brought up the dating, but we'll get there. Yeah, um, it's interesting because you see Sheena having probably the most difficult time between Sandoval and Ariana because she's she was so close to Sandoval, but is also really close to Ariana. And then you have Lala now just going out of her way to open the door to Sandoval again. Yeah. And, I, and I, I, part of me wonders if she's also doing some of that because almost in a rebellious way because Ariana's giving Sheena such a hard time. So Lala's... I don't know. Trying to connect a little bit. I'm not sure. I think that, I don't know. I think like, I honestly think Lala's thinking, oh, next season I'll be Team Ariana again. I think she's just like spicing things up. I don't know. That's what I feel like. I really do. I mean, you need the drama. Okay. But then speaking of Lala, she has a confessional and she says, throw your trash away. Didn't you do a trash bag commercial? Shouldn't you know how to throw your trash in the trash? Um, So one, if that was normal circumstances of somebody I don't like, I would think that's funny. But I feel like that was so shady. And I think that was just super indicative of how, you know, and I don't like the word jealous. And when people would say, oh, all year, Lala's jealous, Lala's jealous. I'm like, she's not jealous. She's not jealous. Now I'm kind of like, yeah, I totally feel like Lala's jealous. And I, mean, I that's watched... just an example, top of mind, the garbage commercial, like you know, garbage bag commercial, and she's bringing that up. And these confessionals are taped. Oh, this is after a... the finale. Like, oh, occurred? way after. Yeah, th- and this is a second confessional, so it was taped even later. This is her second confessional. So, yeah, so you're getting more of a closer to real time. Yeah. Representation of what Lala's thinking. Yeah. Hmm. It's funny, you know what I didn't realize actually? Schwartz was the first person to bring up the whole ego thing, right? Oh, this is this might be interesting. You know what I didn't realize? Schwartz was the first person to bring up the whole like ego thing to the group, right? That night at Sir when they were all sitting around the table. Yeah. Okay. So we know Lala is like whatever with Schwartzy now. I I think, I feel like he said that and then Lala kind of just like Okay, and like kind of running with it. Who do you think said the fucking word ego first? Think it was Schwartz? Because by the way, I don't think it's an ego issue at this point at all. And I still don't think it's an ego issue. It's not an ego issue. It's Sandoval with his bad use of vocabulary, calling her, saying that, no, Ariana's got such a big ego. Then Schwartz is using it. Then everybody's using it and saying, Ariana's an ego. Ariana's an ego. Ariana's an ego. Boom, 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 boom. Who is it? Sandoval. I would bet money. It's very likely. Bet so much money that Santa was the one who started that shit. Because yeah. it's not an ego thing. Also, again, at this point, how is it even ego? Because you're setting, you're telling your friends you don't want them to be friends. And again, she's not even saying it flat out, but she's saying, I will not be friends with somebody who's friends with my ex. But that's not an ego thing. That's a, maybe it's too controlling. Maybe it's, you know, it's a boundary, whatever. But you can't call that an egotistical thing. No. And I think that's so, the opposite of what Ariana is. I mean, even past seasons, I would never pick her as a person that cares the most about you know her ego or has the biggest ego. Right. And she'll speak about how she's cool and she's pretty and all this. But like, I think that's more of her. She has a lot of insecurities. And that's what we learned about her like since season five. And she struggles with self-esteem, with anxiety, with depression. And I feel like that's her her protection to just be like, you know, I'm this, I'm that. And and I hope she believes those things. But I don't think that when she says those things are actually true to how she really feels. I think she just says them. And I think your partner should know that. And if Sandoval doesn't know that by now, then he was never really her partner. He's not paying enough attention. Yeah. Bam. Agree? Bam. Agree. All right. What? So. Which is why the, the dog whole... was left in the room. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The whole ego thing now that's like becoming this snowball effect, which we'll talk about snow and lava later on also. I'm going to do that side piece. Side piece. It's a funny term to use. Side side piece. (laughs) I'm going to do that when you're – I'll do that tomorrow on my own or something. I'll just do a recording of all the updates for the week. But Lala makes this statement and I just – it's just showing how much they're not actually like looking at her as a human I just want Lala to take a second and to look at her and try to understand her and not just say like, she's doing this, she's doing that. But like, why is she actually doing these things? What is she really feeling right now? So anyway, we're back to Sandoval now. And Sandoval says, the house will literally fall apart if I don't do shit. 
Maya hasn't been properly trained. He's blaming everything on Maya not being properly trained. I truly think he's saying this because of like the whole shit with Rachel and Graham not being properly trained, Graham slash hippie, because I think that's like fresh in his head because people were like, well, why is he biting? Because he wasn't properly trained. So I honestly just think he said that about Maya. He wasn't properly trained. He's was your fuck. If she's your fucking dog too, then guess what? It's on you also to make sure she's properly trained if you don't feel like she's properly trained. And guess what? Our dog has been very trained and he still He'll still get into stuff. Anything that he wanted to. Our dog also, we think, well, the, one of the vets was like, he probably has OCD when he's like licking because he licks yeah, everything he, he can. Licks everything, yeah. Like if you have construction done, he'll, he can't be around because he'll literally go lick the sawdust, which is so disgusting. He just eats he it. He just eats everything. It's like pizza or something. But the point is he's now saying all these negative things because he has to deflect from the pain that he's feeling and he is not just opening up and saying, yeah, I fucked up. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm really sorry that happened. I shouldn't have done that. He's just like, bam. Well, it's convenient for him in this situation to be almost putting it back on Ariana and the dog, dog not being trained, Ariana's fault. And then you see in the after show, he's saying how close he was to the dog and how it's oh. not fair to just have Ariana mm-hmm. keep the dog and, you know. By the way, I do not it's believe It's their this. dog. I do not believe this. They played hide and seek together. Did he say that? Okay. He did. He did say that. I forgot. And we were watching like, like Schwartz and Jax are like watching Tom sort of discuss his relationship and how close he was with the dog. And oh, we used to play hide and seek together. And <laughs> that was the most line. Like, this is such a forced like statement coming out of his. It was so, he was so full of shit there. You know Maybe they I, did some of that, but it just just the delivery, it just seems very like calculated. Do you want to know what I think he's actually doing? So I don't think he wants the dog. Does he love the dog? Sure. Have I ever seen him be that attentive towards a do- dog? No. You know what I think he's doing? What? I think he is thinking, well, Ariana's going to be giving up the house to me. I'm going to make it look like she's going to be getting something that I really wanted. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Probably. Oh, let me look at, I gave her the dog and I was so upset about the dog and the dog used to lick my face and lay on me and play hide and seek. We'd be, be playing for hours. That was such a bullshit. He didn't say all that. That was such a bullshit scene. Schwartz's face was just like, Jax, both of them, they were like, you don't even hang out with this dog. You don't hang out with the dog. You didn't know where the dog was for hours. I'm sorry. You can't convince me. I'm the gingerbread man. You can't convince me. Okay. So, uh-huh. so that stuff that we all just wrote up there where he's talking about, you know, Maya not being trained and that that was the scene where he was out on the phone with Schwartz, right? He called Schwartz after. Yeah. And Schwartz is like, well, you know, what's going on? What did I miss? And Right. And he says, um, and Schwartz is like, this has happened to everyone who has do- a dog, everyone who's been a dog owner. And he's right. I think yeah. we've all gone through it's this. Like, dogs get into stuff. Shit. You know, yeah. this happens. I mean, and- maybe this is low extreme laxatives and all that, which by the way, they were Sandoval's laxatives. Put your laxatives away, brother. If there's anything you should be putting away, it's prescription pills or over-the-counter pills, whatever, any kind of medication. That's most important. That's even more important than takeout food. Um, yeah, I, I didn't know laxative bottles come with 500 pills. It's also, do you want to know excessive. why they said he takes laxatives? Or did they say it on the after show? Where did I find this out? I to, don't know if they said that. To keep fit? To sh- to oh, to S-H-I-T like, whatever everything out? Eating, just, yeah, interesting. Gross. <laughs> it's like a thing. It's so gross. Why would you want to be pooping all day? Yeah. So with him and pooping. So back to the conversation with Schwartz on the phone. You know, that was another opportunity again where Sandoval is starting to go off about Ariana to Schwartz on speakerphone and you know, Schwartz kind of then took that opportunity to. What does Sandoval say? Well, Sandoval goes into saying, like, you know, do, do you see the rage that comes out of her? You know, this, these are some of the things that I've had to deal with. Dude, do you see the rage that comes out of her? This is what I dealt with throughout their whole, whole entire relationship. That fucking scary rage all the time. Shut up. Then why didn't you break up with her sooner? You didn't deal with that rage all the time. P.S. So many creators were making videos of Sandoval yelling over the years. I just. I'm like, are you kidding me? Look at the way he yelled at Saucy. Look at the way he yelled at Katie. Look at the way he yelled at Ariana. Look at the way he yelled with the whole Britney thing. No, no, no. You've been filmed. Guess what? Does she act a little better for the camera? Maybe because she's much smarter. But she's come out unleashing on camera a few times. And you've still looked way worse to me every single freaking time. And you've yelled at women every single freaking time. Except for Jax. But like. I mean, it's an opportunity. He knows he's being filmed. He's on camera. It's convenient. He's going to say that stuff to sort of 
get his his word out there. He knows what just went down with the blow up in the kitchen, and now he's talking to Schwartz. And oh, let, let me let me throw out some information from my side, whether they're whether it's actually true or not. Yeah. And this is all Schwartz is listening to. Like, so all his friends are listening. All Sandoval's friends are listening to everything he puts out there all the time. And I'm sure it's really hard to know how a person really is when that happens. And this is what Sandoval, I think, did with Katie, too. He just beat Katie into oblivion in Schwartz's ear. Yeah. And um, I, yeah. I mean, back to Schwartz, like, I do appreciate that in that scene, too. That he's, you know, no comment. You know, yeah. I'm not, I'm not getting involved in, Right. He's not, right? He's he's not giving into it like he, he used to and he's not sort of jumping on Sandoval's side right there. He's just saying, you know, I'm not Yeah. I'm not, no comment. I'm that not getting good. involved in that. I, I think again that's growth for Schwartz. So they plan hanging out, cool. Uh so then we go back inside and Lala's like to Ariana, she's like, You have to have a productive conversation with him. And Ariana's like, I can't. I cannot fucking have a productive conversation with that man. And she's calling him like sociopath and narcissist, all these things. Which, you know, we've all called him. Um, I do think Ariana, as a person, would be capable of having a conversation. But I think what would throw the whole thing off is that Sandoval would bring up other stuff and deflect. And then that's what would set Ariana up. Yeah, so she knows. So it's not that she's not capable. It's that she knows getting into that conversation, it's it's not going to be a productive conversation. You're so right. That's a great point. Because the, yeah, that's a really good point. It's so true. That's what she means. And none of the friends realize that. But well, you I, know that. You always say that like you don't like having conversations with people who are narcissistic because you know what they're trying to do. And yeah, try to, absolutely. Like, and that the, the whole situation gets twisted and then you go there with intents on like what you're going to say and then they twist it. They throw you off. Yeah. And then you forget what you were going to say. And then it's like then you're almost like trying to catch back up in your, in your mind of like, well, what did I come here to say? And now you're almost like defending yourself against other things that they say and right. the whole conversation is just what am I doing here? And that's what I've said like... And I think that's what Ariana would be avoiding right. by not going to talk to Sandoval but all the friends are just seeing it as why don't you talk to him? What, you know, you know. That's why the reunion is probably the better place for an apology because if he can kind of just deliver it like a monologue and I don't know I hope he gives a real apology I've said this in the last podcast I think that that's probably honestly because they're saying I don't know if you guys know this they're saying that now the house thing seems to be dealt with I think he's getting from what I've heard it seems like he's getting the house and oh also she bought the other house so that proves it you would think and I think that in order to have that happen he probably needed to deliver quite the apology and I hope he did I hope so too do you think though that she does, Ariana does need this conversation for peace, like Lala is saying. Because that's like a, a lot of people are like, you need this for your own peace. How do you feel about that? Oh, I actually, she... sorry, can I just say this? This is interesting because me and you deal with this very differently. You choose not to have those conversations a lot. You, when you're upset with someone, you don't want to converse with them. And I'm the opposite. And I'm like, you should talk it out even though you could say how you feel and you don't want to talk to them anymore whatever or you want to establish your boundaries like it's better for you to not hold oh now I'm like answering my own question to not hold that anger inside of you and to not hold the hurt and the pain and all of that it's better to let those feelings out yeah it costs you more internally to hold it in than to just address it my default is to not address it yeah <laughs> <laughs> you know my personal life and, and kind of just ignore and move on but uh, you know, that's something I've definitely gotten better with. Yeah, um, way better. And I'm almost the opposite where I had to learn to like not over address it. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, in Ariana's scenario here, I think she needs that that closure for her own like mental like yeah. Mm -hmm. closure in the sense that like it's it's her wrapping things up and closing it now. Like, you know, they never really had that conversation. We saw at the reunion right. last year where she didn't want to address him at all. At, because she was still processing everything and going through that. And now it's like they're still yeah. in the house together. Mm -hmm. She needs that closure and that, you know, sort of the finality of it, right? Yeah, she doesn't want it and I wouldn't want it, but I would need it. And I think she needs it. I do. All right. So one of my favorite lines of the episode is when... Wait. So now we jump into one of my favorite lines of the episode schwartz comes back in after being outside talking to katie and he recognizes he's coming into this sort of tense environment and he just comes out with the comment of how's the pizza 
<laughs> and it's just funny because it's like it, it kind of just breaks the silence and you see Dana's face. She kind of like rolls her eyes. And I think Lala says something like, oh, my God. And it was, uh, you know, Schwartz is then looking over at Ariana and Ariana sort of gives Schwartz those eyes. And she's like, well, now I'm mad at you by association. I you know, I'm mad at you again. And Schwartz is like, oh, uh, of course, like, you know, I knew it. And yeah, that was sort of like his cue to leave. And he goes, you know, bye, Katie, you know, call me. And I thought that was that was really funny. And then Ariana sort of, you know, broke again. You see her laughing see her as he's laughing. leaving. They had to like edit it just right because, yeah. I just thought that was just like a, it was just a good end to that scene with Schwartz just being Schwartz. Yeah, it does help. It does. It does help to have them in the moment. And it's just like another sign of Ariana with Schwartz where she's making the face of him. I call her like, she looks like a little, have you ever seen the movie Firestarter? But you, I've never seen it, no. I used to love because I was like a weirdo. I loved watching horror movies when I was a kid, which I don't know why my, my dad would let me do that. I say my dad only because I have two parents I'd live with, but my mom would never have let me. So my dad would let me do that shit. So I always say Ariana looks like Drew Barrymore, like a little Drew Barrymore, especially when she smiled. And the movie Firestarter has Drew Barrymore and she's making a face. Look, I'll pull it up so you can see. See her face. Okay. Yeah, that's like the same face that Ariana was making <laughs> with Schwartz. the same face. I have to make a clip of this. And she reminds me so much of her. And, and she, then she literally says, I'll set fire to him. Like, I'll set fire to him. And then they were like, what are you going to do? Yeah, she knows like you're going to be home with him in the same house later. So I get why they all concerned for her living home with him in the same house. Because like, how do you live like this yeah. and, and function and have peace in your life? You know, you can't. But- I do love that comment, Katie. Call you. I mean, Kate. He's he's like in still in love with Katie. I can't believe he's yeah, dating I, somebody now. It just goes back to there's there's still, I mean, there's so much history there. There's still those, there's still that connection, and you know, he's joking, but it's also like kind of a a, a playful little flirty joke. I think that's kind of how I took it. Oh, like those lines that they say earlier in the night. We forgot. Schwartz says, "From here on out, you know." And Katie says, "I won't fuck any more of your friends." <laughs> <laughs> and they just both kind of laugh and start walking inside. Um, you what was that? You would think that was Pizza Hut pizza. Yeah, so the box. It said, I'm pretty sure it said Pizza Hut. It didn't look. You think it looked like Pizza Hut? Well, we usually get pan pizza from Pizza Hut. Yeah, no, this looked like the regular, not the deep dish, just the regular Pizza Hut. Oh, wait, I have another important PSA for everyone. If you've never gotten the breadsticks at Pizza Hut, and when I say the breadsticks, I do not mean cheesy bread. We love cheesy bread. But Domino's cheesy bread is a shit. Pizza Hut, you have to get the regular breadsticks because that garlicky seasoning cheese. We gotta make that. The gar we gotta can we make that? That delicious processed <laughs> so good. Like the fake <laughs> yeah. cheese and garlic. Amazing. But no, but it's just amazing. It's just good. the crunch of the the the, uh, the breadstick. Yeah, it's it's really good. So good. Book it. Book it. All right. Well, they have the book it club. That's why I said book it. Oh. Yeah. Would you think I meant like book a date to Pizza Hut? Yeah. Oh, no, but that's like book true. it. Yeah, no, I meant book it like because the, whenever we did book it when we were uh, kids, we got to go to Pizza Hut. You okay. get a free personal pizza if you read your books. Yeah. Best program ever. That was the best. All right. So now we get to the secret scene, which is just the extended version from Peacock, one of the scenes that's pretty long that we were saying before we felt like should have been on TV. And it was Sandoval, Schwartz, and Kyle Chan is sitting at a bar having lobster paella together and some drinks. And Kyle Chan, <laughs> it was funny, he got the drink and they dropped the drink down and he's like, oh, so sexy. I just love the way it's he like says the it. best part of the whole scene. Yeah. It's the only good part of the scene. Um, Sandoval goes off on Ariana, like off on her. And he's talking about her complaining and he says, Ariana doesn't do a goddamn fucking thing in that house. I don't even know how her ass gets wiped. That girl is so fucking goddamn lazy. I hate saying the word GD. You don't even empty the litter box for your own cat. And he says it with so much what so would you much say? Like aggression. Yeah. And then like the camera sort of cuts to Schwartz and Kyle as as Tom is saying this. And Schwartz is just kind of, you know, looking off into the distance not acknowledging what Tom is saying and Kyle's picking up his drink, just looking forward, drinking his drink. It's like you can kind of tell they don't want anything to do with what Tom is saying. It's that's that's kind of how I took it. It's so uncomfortable. And he's just kind of like unloading a little bit and it's just like, like what what is he doing here? And he didn't have alcohol on him because he's sober. So that's like the crazy thing too. He's talking like this. I mean, the whole sober. scene, he was, he was very uh, coming in hard, coming in hard, obnoxious, yeah. aggressive, I think. Yeah. You know, calling Katie the hypocrite. What's that hypocrite up to? 
That's when we talked about that before. Yeah. Yeah. The one thing we didn't talk about though, that kind of rubbed me the wrong way was when he brought up the, the singles event and was sort of inviting Schwartz and said, you know, I I think, uh, what what do you say? Something about the, the girls will be, you know, our, our, our age, our age range or whatever, or or maybe even younger, but like said with like a little smirk and I was just like, Ooh, give me the ick. It was a little creepy. I forgot about that because you, you brought that up and I forgot because the, that, no, that's gross. Uh, well, first off, what, what's, what's their age range? Like, what is he referring to there? Right. Like, why? Does and he then he's like, or maybe even younger with like a little smile on his face. And I was like, ugh, gross. Yeah. I mean, I, well, I mean, he, that was a bad scene. That was like, yeah. I, well, I would T was, T's what? 25. 25. Yeah, so I mean that's already the, you know, 16 years younger than him, so is that like is that the age <laughs> range he's looking at and yeah. I don't treat it, it just the way he delivered it and presented it, it was a little uh, icky. Yeah. Really... Okay, so finally we have the beach day and Banner Pump is like infamous for beach days. They just like never have a good one. And this is a, like another beach day from H E double hockey sticks. So the interesting thing, though, is I said this in another podcast with M. This is where we had the behind the scenes where Lala was hugging Sandoval. And I could see now that she was hugging him in the way that I had originally thought, which was like, eh, come here, buddy. Like, we're working things out. We're talking, whatever. And Because now we see they had the conversation before. With, you know, they want to be friends with that old branch. And she's like kind of defending him and like seems to feel a little bit bad for him. James makes the line in the sand, draws the physical line in the sand. It's just funny to separate that. Typical James thing, yeah, bring the jokes out. You need the comedic break, I feel like, right? Otherwise, it's just too tense. Um, Now, this scene, the boys bring up, actually, sorry, Sandoval. We thought it was the boys. It wasn't. The second time we watched it, we realized it was Sandoval who brings up going to a singles event on the beach. Why are you bringing that up on the beach with your x right there who you cheated on it's just is that a very good idea? weird and not f- well f- before we even jump to that the one thing i want to acknowledge really quick is that we saw earlier in the season ariana and katie were always filming on their own you know they didn't want to go to tahoe like ariana was very distanced from sandoval and now in this episode we have two examples here where ariana is almost saying like okay whatever i'm gonna film around him and you know she's sort of going outside of her comfort zone to be around him. And then what I didn't feel comfortable about in this scene was how open the guys of the group were, and including Sandoval, obviously, in just talking about this stuff in front of Ariana. And it just felt very not right. Yes, and exactly what she wanted. And I just realized, you dirty dog, which is what Schwartz said to Katie about the sleeping with Max, but you dirty dog, you know what he's doing, Sandoval? He's bringing this shit up to get her activated i just realized he knows what it's gonna do he knows it's gonna cause a disruption he knows she's gonna be the one who looks bad he's bringing this up why to try to get her to have a blow to have a reaction have a reaction he's bringing this up to have a scene to have a reaction yep don't you think to look like the one walking away and whatever well let me think hold on yesterday he didn't do it in that way she brought it up but today, maybe because he's pissed off, he brings it up and gets the reaction. Yeah. Maybe. Think so? Uh, I mean, two very different scenarios. I think Ariana bringing it up the previous day at what we're assuming it's the previous day at the Pizza Hut dinner was to take a dig at Sandoval for the dog thing. What Sandoval is saying here about singles night is a very different dig because it's, it's hitting right at the core thing that happened between them. Mm-hmm. It's a much deeper dig. Well, I mean, they're both pretty deep digs. The dog and that. <laughs> pretty deep yeah. Well. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know if he's doing it purposely to get a reaction, but I wouldn't discount it. And I was just watching a video. Like, I put up a post a while ago, and I'm like, you know, one thing about Sandoval is he did let Kristen film with them. And somebody's like, do you not remember Hawaii? And I was like, oh, shit. I forgot about Hawaii. So when him and Kristen broke up, he wants to go to Hawaii for his and Jax's like birthday thing. And he didn't want Kristen there. And that was a place where he was yelling and he was yelling at Katie and yelling. And Ariana was like defending him. She's like, he doesn't want him there for his birthday. Like, why can't he, you know, have what he wanted to his birthday? That, yeah. And he was freaking out. And he he's like, why would I want my ex to be there? Like, why do I have to have that? Uh, how the times have changed. How the tables have turned. Yes. <laughs> so like, oh, how 
funny, mister. You didn't want Kristen to be there. But now everybody's supposed to just have you there when you did that to Ariana. What? What? Right? Yeah. It's very inconsiderate of the way, uh, the way there you like you said, the boys doing that. Brock making the comment about freaking Raquel. What's wrong with you, Brock? Oh You're bringing up Raquel Brock, on the what beach. What are you doing? Are you kidding me? That that annoyed me. He's yeah, trying to I, get his a, place in the next season as a full time cast member, maybe. <laughs> probably. Uh, I, yeah, that was just a, <sighs> a really bad thing to bring up in front of Ariana when it's still so fresh. Brock like has this like thing i think where you just like say it and then apologize after which is kind of like Lala's mentality i feel like say it and then just apologize ask for forgiveness and after i think Jax has even said that like you know not cool and i just feel like ariana rarely ever throws anyone under the bus and so the fact that they're doing it to her so this is where she calls sandoval a misogynist and she's like he's a misogynist you know he only listens to men, you men should be the one saying it to everyone, or you men should be telling him, like putting him in this place. Yeah, absolutely. I, th- I think we said it before. Like, I think Sandoval would listen more if someone like Brock is telling, him, like, dude, just own your shit. Stop mm-hmm. saying all this stuff. Just let time pass. And like that will help heal some of this. Don't double down mm-hmm. and deflect and constantly bring things up and take jabs. Let a little time pass. And I don't think he has anyone in his ear that we can see at least that's like just telling him that on camera. Right. Or at least not yet, maybe later in the season. Um, I think that Schwartz and Kyle, like from what I'm gathering from Sandoval's podcast, Schwartz and Kyle Chan are the ones who bring this up to him and try to correct him. Like I said, Kyle Chan, that one podcast was like the Sandoval whisper. And then wait, what was the other thing where, where Tom... It wasn't Kyle Chan. It was another thing where Tom acted like someone like a reasonable human recently. Oh, the hot mic with um, there was a hot mic podcast with Alex Baskin, the producer of the show, and he sort of deactivated Sandoval and got him to like talk a little bit more like a normal person with feelings and thoughts and all of those things. And it was interesting to see if he only had people in his life doing that more. Or if he only listens to people more, like if he listened to the Kyle Chance and the Tom Schwartzes and you know what I mean? Yeah, I think just the listening in he, general. He wasn't listening to Brock when he was- Goes a long way. Yeah, I mean, Brock was giving him advice on the on the gondola and Lake Tahoe and outside when they were playing basketball. And yeah. I, I don't know how much of that is actually registering with, mm-hmm. with Tom. It's funny, speaking, this is on a somewhat related Jax- was on the podcast with Danny Bucco. And by the way, he said you pronounce his last name Bucco, not Bucco. Bucco? And oh. Jax was like, how do you say your last name again? He's like, dude, like, I'm supposed to be one of your best friends. Like, <laughs> it's like, you don't know how to say my last name. He's like, is Bucco, Bucco? It's like, it's Bucco. And then there was other things he asked him. He's like, how do you not know this about me? And I said this before, like, I feel like Danny is going to be a good influence for Jax. And I think having him be able to watch people's reaction to Danny and how Danny's a good husband and the way he's doing things as a good husband and partner. And I love Danny and Jason. Love Jason. Yeah, they're great. I think seeing those examples will help Jax. And like Sandoval should just like follow some good examples. Yeah. (laughs) Hopefully we see a different Sandoval next season. (laughs) Very hopeful. All right. I think we're done with the Vanderpump recap. And that was a lot. You did a good job going over it with me. Well, thank you. Do you want to stick around for the valley for a night, too? Let's see how the public reacts to this one first. (laughs) Okay. All right. Very, very quick news for the end of this because I'm going to put the bigger news in the next episode that we do with the valley, which will be a very short episode. But some little things to talk about. I'll go into depth with it more in a few days. Like I said, Lala has really been talking hard about Ariana. And the thing that's been frustrating me about this is that we don't hear Ariana doing the same thing back. And this is something we actually brought up on this podcast before I heard Lala's podcast that she did with Heather McDonald. And Heather was great at challenging her and basically saying like all the ways Ariana should feel while Lala was going on explaining how basically 
they're all here for the show and to make money and they have these businesses. If you don't know, Lala also just purchased a $3.1 million house in the Valley. The other big thing is this. There is a rumor going around that there are three people that are not coming back to Vanderpump Rules. I, again, when I see these things, guys, I, I don't know where the rumor actually started. I don't know who was the originator of the rumor. I don't know if they have information that I don't have. What I do know is that I did hear on my own that there is one person who is likely not to come back. And it was very upsetting. I'm hoping it doesn't end up happening. But it was, it was sad. And so if that person isn't there, I could see like other people not being there. I'm just not sure if it'll play out. We shall see. Quickly, Rachel's podcast. And again, I'll go in depth about this in the future podcast in a couple days. But Rachel said that Joe, but if you don't know, Joe Wenberg from the show, Tom Schwartz's situation chip, put up a post on her stories which was the best and worst dress of the iHeart Radio Awards. Rachel was included on the best list. And Katie and Dana were on the worst. And she showed like a reel of this article and circled worst to show where Katie and Dana were. Then we find out, which I thought was awful. Like that was mean. Then we find out from Rachel's podcast she says basically that she like needs to share this I guess she realized that everybody was attacking Joe and she said she was the one who encouraged Joe to post it because by the way Rachel reposted it on her stories lovely but she's actually the one who encouraged Joe to post it okay so good for sharing that and letting your friend off the hook a bit but really Rachel that's what you're doing You're encouraging her to post something with women against women. And so Rachel says, this isn't the person I want to be. I don't want to be part of this. But honestly, guys, I've just had it up to here with what she says. I don't believe it anymore. And I haven't since the lawsuit. But I just don't don't think she has good intentions. I really don't. And I will see. I will always be open to seeing how people change or act. But man, if you just look at what we've been shown so far, to not only want to post it, but then encourage somebody else to post it for you so that you can then repost it, come on. That's a whole other level. That's kind of like the scannable level. Not exactly, but I'm saying like it's just like another level of twistedness and it's really upsetting. So yeah, I'm going to talk about that more. I'll go into the details of what was said on the podcast. I'll go into details of what was said in Lala's podcast with Heather McDonald because that was very interesting. Hopefully we have some Amazon Lives this week before I release the next episode. Okay, now back to the pod. Thank you guys so much for joining us for another episode of Down to Reality. Once again, please leave us a review wherever you listen to us. It is so appreciated. And if it's not five stars, let us know first. We could talk it out maybe. Follow me on social media. I am Reality Ops. Husband is not on social media. Well, he is, but not publicly. You could also find our podcast page on social media, Down to Reality Pod. But I am also going to be doing a Patreon for us. So for the Patreon, it'll be Reality Ops dash Down to Reality Pod. So you're going to get a lot of goodies there. Please message what you would like on the Patreon. I am doing this out of requests of a few very sweet followers. Um, but I think it'll be fun. I'm excited to do it. Hopefully next week we will have M back on the pod with us. And yeah, we look forward to chatting soon. Guys, no joke. My husband is literally sleeping on the couch next to me right now. <laughs> That's what happened at the end of this. Thank you again. We appreciate you. And we will talk to you later. 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 <laughs> <laughs>